scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I felt stirred in my heart as I prepared and, and I'm going to just do a bit of salutation shortly. But let me just say this. I felt very stirred in my heart to charge us... Um, especially in the area of gratitude and thanksgiving this this is not i, I just thought it um while while we're just coming it was strong in my heart many believers do not see the faithfulness of god consistently in their lives because we have not made it a revelation to always give thanks i think it's psalm 107 or so if you can give that to us very quickly, Psalm 107 from verse 1. Oh, give thanks, it says, unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercies endure it forever. Verse 2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He's speaking with respect to thanksgiving, whom he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Verse 3, it says, and gather them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Verse 4. They wandered in the wilderness. Now watch their situation before his intervention. They found no city to dwell in. 5. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. They cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them out of their distress. Seven. It says he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. Verse eight. It says, oh, that man, on account of the things that he has done, would praise the Lord, not just receive from him, but praise the Lord. Why? For his goodness, it says, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse nine. For he satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with goodness. Many believers do not lay to heart to be thankful. Many believers do not lay to heart to say, Father, whilst I am expecting this and that and that from you, I must be very intentional about saying thank you for the one you have done. Hallelujah. Do you know? thankfulness and gratitude is proof of humility hallelujah we live in a world where many people are embarrassed to acknowledge the contribution of other people to their well-being to their success to their progress we live in a world that prides itself in a feeling of self-sufficiency in other words i rose up without any man contributing to my life and it is not usual for men to give credit because our pride and ego does not allow us to appreciate the contribution of others our understanding subliminally is that every time I acknowledge the contribution of God and men, I weaken my sense or my, the, my perception of value. So we believe that every time you declare that unless for God and unless for men, you probably would not be in this state. The feedback we get from that is that it means you don't amount to much. So we always would like to downplay and demean first the contributions of God and then the contribution of people, destiny help us that he strategically positioned. And it is the reason why many people do not receive help continually. I have taught you that one of the greatest ways to invest in relationships 
is to be grateful. If you cannot contribute value, contribute gratitude. This is someone's revelation already. Every time you are part of a functional relationship that benefits you, if you do not have value to bring, water that relationship by being lavishly grateful, continuously grateful, and your gratitude will be an equivalent value. Are we together? I have learned as a principle to always be grateful, to never take God for granted, to never take men for granted. And this probably is a word for someone because you came for miracle service tonight trusting God to reopen doors that were once opened. And I can tell you before you receive those doors opened again, you need to know why they closed in the first place. And for many people it closed not just because of demonic attack, because of an attitude of pride and ingratitude. The man who paid your school fees from a child till you became an adult, when you appreciate him, people, you say, well, you are one of the many people who contributed to my lives. Just to let you know I'm grateful, carelessly grateful. And you find out that with that attitude, the man says, no problem. I've stopped paying your school fees. But the favor that should bring continuity did not rest on you. Are we together? One thing we never see Lot telling Abraham was thank you. Among the many things we never see Lot saying, Abraham, thank you. When God called you, he did not call me. I followed you foolishly and I became as blessed as you. To a point we do not know the one that God called and the one that followed because we were equally blessed. Thank you. You must learn to be grateful. There are doors that will open and remain open for yourself, for your children, your children's children. The prophetic can open doors, that is true. Right keys can open doors, but gratitude can keep the doors open. It is impossible to ignore a grateful person. Even if a grateful person wrongs you, his gratitude will trivialize that wrong and force you to still forgive. Hallelujah. Are we learning now? Yeah. This is true for ministry. It is true for your corporate life. You maintain, you fuel relationships by being grateful. Thank you so much for introducing me to Koinonia. I know that it's been one year my life has changed. And you may think I've forgotten you, but just to let you know that I am grateful. And the person says, who is this? I can't even remember. And will kneel down there without you knowing and say, oh God, for this person to have recognized my contribution, bless the person again. Hallelujah. Some of us don't say thank you to anybody, including God. God, what have you done? I woke up, so what? I'm alive, so what? My hands are moving, so what? I can speak, so what? The day you do the one that is worth saying thank you, I will tell you. And God refers you to Psalm 3, that I lay me down and I slept. He says, I only awake because the Lord sustained me. In one minute while you are seated, can you say thank you Jesus let him know you are grateful I would have been dead by now but for your mercy uh, it is only somebody who is alive that can trust God for prosperity it is only someone who is alive that can trust God for your ministry expanding it is only someone who is alive that can trust God for vengeance go ahead and thank him for life for health Thank him for koinonia, the marvelous manifestations of his hand in our midst. How could we be ungrateful? Thank you. Go ahead. Tell him thank you. Let him know. You maintain the flow of help and favor through relationships when you are grateful. Lord, I thank you for the things that you have done through this great ministry affecting millions of lives bringing the power of God bringing wisdom to your people we thank you in Jesus name we pray the Bible says trust in the Lord with all your hearts Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 it says and lean not unto your own understanding Verse 6 says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. 
7 says, Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Has someone been blessed already? I welcome every one of you to this destiny encounter. And I know that God himself will give you a reason to rejoice in the name of Jesus. I want to specially welcome um, our international guests. Thank you so much for taking the time to come in. Let's give them a big God bless you. I also want to appreciate our online community, those following, connecting from across the globe, Koinonia Global. Thank you so much in the name of Jesus. And then please help me honor uh, a dear friend, a great man of God, all the way from Cote d'Ivoire, Reverend Raoul Wafo. Thank you. Please give him a big God bless you. Thank you. Very great, very great and dynamic man of God. And then we're honored to have her in our presence, in our midst tonight, gracing us with her presence, uh, Her Majesty, the wife of the Olu of Wari. Let's give her a big, big God bless you. God bless you, Ma. Always an honor to have you in our midst. And every other person, may God bless you and honor you and lift you and surprise you tonight. Amen. Refuse to be a spectator. If you come and the only thing you see is the miracle of others and clap, you wasted your time. You must insist and be angry that my portion is what I came for. As I receive my own, I will celebrate God as he touches others. But assume you are the only one who came here today. Are we together now? Yeah. The Bible, well, history may not tell us whether the woman with the issue of blood was the only one there. Usually, lepers had a place, and those with all kinds of infirmities, they would line them in a common place. She isolated herself by force. There probably were other people. Remember, the Bible would tell us that there were people who were sick, lame. Usually, they had a place, they kept all of them. But this woman said, I respect everyone who is there, but I'm the one who knows my pain. Hallelujah. If I may but touch. She didn't say we but touch. I don't have the time to keep priming another person's faith. But I came tonight hungry and desperate. So don't allow the carelessness of someone by your left and right perhaps disrupt your focus. If the person decides to play games with God tonight, save Johnny. Maybe life is still playing games with him before he knows the reality of what it means to trust God. And open up your heart for a miracle. But for you who has come holding a death sentence in your hand as a medical report. But for you who has come trusting God to swing open gates that have refused to open for decades. Please be serious and let your heart be enlarged. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me give my charge very quickly and then we'll go to pray. Um, I tell you there will be a tsunami of his presence and his power in this place tonight hallelujah for as long as i am alive for as long as i live serving the lord i will not let one person become a victim of satan's assault yeah. we will heal all we can heal by the spirit of god deliver all we can deliver save all we can save stand in partnership with the spirit to rewrite the stories of destinies and that includes yours tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, there are two important factors responsible for commanding unending results in the life of the believer. This is my charge now. Two important factors, and the Lord placed this in my heart to share as we prepare to see the marvelous things that he'll be doing tonight. Two important things that the Lord that is responsible for commanding unending results. You see, it's one thing to have results, but it's another thing to have perpetual, continual, ever-increasing results. And I have taught you here that your results is very important for exalting and revealing Jesus to the nations. He said, herein is our Father glorified, when ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Two important factors. Number one, the first factor that is responsible for the believer enjoying ever-increasing results is called the state of your heart. Please write it down. The state of your heart. 
It is amazing that most believers do not pay attention to the states of their heart, your motif, in other words. We keep pressing for all kinds of miracles and supernatural manifestations from God, and we have not learned the factors that God looks for. Hallelujah. When you're being trained to go, say, to an embassy, maybe for a visa, say, a U.S. embassy or any other embassy that would probe you and ask you questions, usually if you have the opportunity to have someone train you, they will train you to learn the things that the people are looking for. Is that true? There are certain things they need to know. Maybe your financials, maybe your family ties. They want to know certain things, and those things will become the determining factor. They may not particularly have any bias. They don't even know you. But they, are, they have been trained to identify certain factors. Am I right on that? And if they are convinced based on your answer that those factors are there, they may stamp your visa. And if they are not convinced, it's possible that you may lose an opportunity to have your visa stamped. I'm just giving that example. So it's possible to find someone sharp, responsible looking gentleman and he will go out of that embassy and walk out without a visa. And you will see an unassuming person who looks confused but has tried to understand whether by luck or by understanding that this is what they may most likely be asking and he will come out rejoicing, I have my visa stamped. When you come to God to receive, as much as God is compassionate, as much as God is merciful, God is also principled. I want you to know that he has chosen to submit himself to his word. So God is moved, listen, he's touched with the feelings of your infirmity. But what moves him is his word. He has chosen to honor his word. And that is the reason why you cannot whip up sentiments and believe that God will uniquely just exempt you in defiance to his principles. When you know this about God, you will respect the fact that he's a loving God, he's a merciful God, but that there are certain things that heaven wants to see as far as the believer's work is concerned. That is the reason why three or four people can come before the Lord desiring to receive. The Bible tells us about the prayer of two people in the Bible. That one person came to pray and another person came to pray. Both of them came to pray before the Lord. And one person stood in pride and self-sufficiency. I am this. I give alms. I don't do this. And another person came as a sinner. Opening his heart to say, Lord, I'm not even deserving of your mercy. Jesus was giving this as a parable. And he said, which of the two do you think will be answered? So the same God is rich unto all. The same Lord is rich unto all. But not many people or not everybody will receive as they desire from God. And I'm telling you that one of the major controlling factors as far as receiving from God and generally doing business with God is concerned is the state of your heart. Write that down, please. The state of your heart. Psalm 119, we'll see verse 2 and then verse 10. Psalm 119, it says, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. Watch this. That seek him with the whole heart. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. Go to verse 10. It says, With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments with my whole heart. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8, the Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. One whose motive has been purified. He said, For they shall see God. They shall see God rise for them. They shall see God come through for them. They shall see God change their stories. I like the way the Bible says it. It just says, for they shall see God. There is no limit to what you can see him do when your heart is pure. They shall see God. To some, they will see God lift them. To some, they will see God bring down their enemies. To some, they will see God open doors. To some, they will see God change their story. But by all means, he says, blessed are those who are pure in heart. You know what it means to be pure in heart? It doesn't just mean to be sincere in your desire. That your motive has been so purified that behind the things that you seek God for, 
is the singular desire, of course, to improve your life, but truly that you desire everything God gives you for the purpose of revealing him to the nations as you rise also, that behind the prosperity, behind the lifting, Listen, if you understand what I'm teaching you, even before I begin to pray, you will find out that certain sicknesses are just dropping. It is true. In my work with God, the greatest determinant, as far as the manifestation of God's hand is concerned in the life of a man, is the state of your heart. You have heard me say it a thousand times. You can fast all you can, pray all you can, read the Bible cover to cover all you can, attend church all you can as important as those things are if they do not translate to first of all purifying your motive so you can come to god and say father in this miracle service this grace called favor let me tell you how the grace of god works when it comes and finds a corrupted motive it will not rest rather the holy spirit will translate himself to a refiner's fire and walk on your heart first before that grace rests because it will be a waste you will not receive anything so a man of god is praying and say father let grace come upon me give my ministry visibility across the nations and that grace that lifts men as it comes it finds a heart that is corrupt i hope you know that your heart too is a prayer warrior it's not just your lips. Your lips can be saying, Lord, be blessed. And your heart says, Lord, give me this and let me show people that I'm not a small person. There are a list of people in my heart that I need to prove a point to. <laughs> Is someone learning? I have found that for years, I studied why people would pray and fast and do everything right. And yet it will look like the God of heaven. I know that he's not a wicked God. So what is restraining your hand, oh God, from reaching them? And the diagnosis number one is that the state of your heart needs purging, needs correction, needs adjustment, needs purification. So for many of us, before he comes as a miracle worker, allow him come as a refiner's fire. Hmm. Father, what is there? You can give me 100 million. You can give me 1 billion. You can bring me out of this financial calamity. What is there to heal this cancer or to heal this diabetes? What is there to turn this, this plague of witchcraft in my life? And God says, my hand is not too short. But every time I come, I see that in your pursuit, God is not a factor. You are just using religion or church or spirituality to fuel your lust. And God says, that is not how I walk. Is someone learning? In teaching people how to receive from God, if the only thing you teach them are the dynamics of spiritual activities without probing into their heart, you can give them the rod, even if you are Elisha, they will take that rod and lay it on a dead body. Correct rod, correct instruction. It will not come back to life because the state of your heart is the battery that powers everything. You can give someone a brand new clock and it does not work. The battery that powers it is the state of your heart. Every time I prepare for the miracle service or any other service, I tell you, among the many things I ask God to do is, Father, purify my heart. Let it never be that my standing here is a man's ambition just to build an empire. No, the agenda is beyond showing that a man of God is powerful. The agenda is beyond showing that there is a great global ministry. My concern, my desperation, my pursuit, my desire is to see number one that jesus is revealed and that in him being revealed let his outstretched arm rest upon his people terminating all kinds of yokes in their lives john said that i may decrease so that he will increase is someone learning now so that you don't recycle your prayer request again i wonder why i wrote that request in july i wrote it in august in september Lord, why is my prayer request not being answered? Perhaps God is saying, it does not take me any time to visit you, but let's walk on your heart. Hallelujah. 
Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer a sacrifice of praise. Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit once again. Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer the sacrifice of praise. Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit once again. Psalm 21 to 4. I hope someone is receiving already. Yeah. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. He says, the name of the God of Jacob defend thee. We are reading to 4 verse 2. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Verse 3. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. I like how KJV puts verse 4. He says, grant thee according to thine own heart. Stop there. Other versions will say, oh, grant you your heart desire. But I like the way KJV puts it. It says, grant thee, not just according to his power, according to the state of your heart. Grant thee, not just according to his power, according to your heart. Grant thee your request. Grant thee the anointing. Grant thee the favor. Grant thee the healing. Grant thee all of this according to your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, is one of the grandest formula in the life of this man you see. I am very unapologetic with pouring out my heart before the Lord. Especially when I'm coming to stand. Lord, if, if by any means the desire to build an empire, maybe I did not know and it just crept into my heart. Let the circumcision start with me first. You don't just stand and say, be healed and watch people. Heal. God is not a herbalist. Hello? Are we together now? You want to stand and make declarations and the gates of people's destiny be open? It takes more than prayer and fasting. You believe me on that. It takes more than just Bible study. All those activities only find their place when the heart is truly purified. And what does it mean for your heart to be purified? To see Jesus glorified. That beyond building an empire, beyond wanting to make a name, i rather people forget Joshua Selman and remember Jesus. i rather people forget Koinonia and remember Jesus. If you forget about the name of the preacher who God used to bring you healing and you remember the God who healed you, it's an intelligent bargain. If you forget the name of the ministry that God used to turn your life around, but you remember the one who healed you. But if you remember Joshua Selman, if you remember Koinonia, if you remember the manifestations of power, if you remember the color of the cloth that I wore, and forget Jesus, and forget that it was by his mercy, at the end of it, you'd only practice idolatry. If you're a man of God here and you came for this miracle service, I want you to listen to me very well. I can tell you with all due respect and by the privilege of God's mercies. I don't know everything about God. I'm a student still learning. But I can tell you, I understand something about the presence and the power of God. And that in the economy of the anointing, the state of a man's heart vetoes every other thing. Hallelujah. Are we learning now? Yeah. Listen, when I say these things, I desire Koinonia to grow higher. I desire myself as a man of God to keep rising higher. So when I say these things, some of you feel ah, it's a risk. Are you not bringing yourself down? But that's how we got here. Oh. The more we reduce, the more you knew about us. It's a mystery that the more you decrease, you will not disappear. You are still needed. But the more you decrease mysteriously 
as you lift him, people also see you. But when the agenda is about lifting yourself and promoting yourself, they will forget you because God is too serious to allow his name to fall to the ground because of the ambition of a man who does not respect and regard him. Is someone learning already? Man of God, that may be the reason. You may be a man of integrity, I agree. You may be a man of character, I agree. You may even be a man who is sincerely loving God, I agree. But perhaps the missing link can be that you are hoping to use ministry as a ladder to gain popularity and fame, followership and loyalty. That is not the assignment of ministry. John 1, 6, there was a man sent from God his name was John 7. The same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that all men through him might believe. Believe in who? The light. You would also believe in the light bearer, but start by believing in the light. Are we together? Is someone learning? So for some of you, before he comes as a miracle worker, He's coming as a refiner's fire. Ah. Purifying your heart. Teaching you that when God comes to you to lift you, he wants to see how that lifting will translate to revealing his glory and how it will translate to being a blessing to many. It's all about you, Jesus. And all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God. And I surrender. It's all about you. And all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God. I'll sing it one more time. Let it enter your spirit. That it's all about you. for you it's for your glory and your fame it's not about me as if you should do things my way you alone are God and I surrender oh you alone are God and I surrender My greatest relevance is standing behind the cross and pushing Jesus, promoting him, let people see him. It is not only the greatest position, it is the safest position. Because any attack that comes to you will pass through the cross before it reaches you. But when you stand in front of the cross, you become a victim of your own pride. Mm, you are safe when you stand behind the cross. Let Jesus be seen before you are seen. Let Jesus be revealed before you are revealed. Whatever arsenal comes, it will meet with the cross first. Whatever will meet you will have to defeat the cross. I am comfortable standing behind the cross. It's all about you. Hear me preacher. Jesus. And all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God and I surrender. Oh, you alone are God and I surrender. 
comes to me with a very simple bargain son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you father give me the grace if that is it let men even if it means them forgetting about me no problem but may they always remember you when they see me may they always remember your power when they see me may they always remember your wisdom i am satisfied being a mirror no mirror reflects its own image no the mirror stands clear and whatever object stands before it it reflects it so when people look at you as the mirror and it is you they are seeing you are reflecting something else is someone learning yeah make up your mind and say lord bring me out of this witchcraft plague in my family and watch a mirror that will reflect you to the nations and the lord says what did you say where is the power that has tied you for 80 years tied your family for 80 years here is a vessel that is determined to see my power and my glory that i want to become a testimony that god lifts lord i'm not just looking for healing i'm not just looking for longevity for the name no, I want to be used as a specimen that every time the nations doubt whether there is a God, you will push me forward and I say, look at my life. I am a testament of what God can do with an ordinary man. Esther got to the palace and she forgot the purpose for her rising. And Mordecai warned her, said there was a woman there before you all. So if you mess up God's program the same way Vashti left, he will also take you away and keep overturning until he finds a vessel that can be a mirror. For some of you, God brought you here because you are literally at the red tape. It, don't let God take your bishopric because you are determined to be seen. You can still be gifted while forgotten. You can still be gifted, whereas in a strange way, as gifted as you are, nobody will remember you and nobody will place a demand upon your life. And yet God will find someone who may not be as gifted, but say, Lord, from this, I, I came from a village. I cannot even speak very well like Moses. And God says, a stammerer that will reveal me is greater than an orator who will let men see self. Someone, while you are seated, I'd like you to pray in one minute. Father, purge my heart. I know that I came to be healed, but purge my heart. I came to be delivered, but purge my heart. Bring me to that point where my entire life becomes a, a project, a project to revealing you. Go ahead and pray. Overflows, pray. Online, pray. Jesus is speaking to someone. It's not because his power cannot be outstretched. Go ahead and pray. Purge my heart. Purify my motif. I cry to you, the God of my salvation. The tendency is there for self to want to be revealed, for flesh to want to be revealed. Take a minute to pray. This is part of the miracle service. A real miracle is happening in your heart that will ripple itself across every other part of your life. Sana Sabalaska Franda Balakatosi prayers. It's all about you, Jesus, and all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's all about you, Jesus, and all this is for you, it's for your glory and your fame, it's all about you, Jesus, and all this is for you. For oh, your glory and your fame, it's not about me. As if you should do things my way, you alone are God, and I surrender. 
when I heard the mighty testimonies that were happening as they were being shared here, my heart, I was almost in tears and I said, my goodness, this is what God can do. I'm sure someone in the congregation is thinking powerful man of God. And yet the man of God himself is thinking powerful God, powerful God who can walk through ordinary men and produce miraculous manifestations. Can I tell you, there is no end to what you can see in the life of any man who chooses to make his life a mirror that reveals Jesus. Let me give us number two. The state of your heart. And then number two, what is the second factor that governs, that is responsible for commanding unending results? Second to the state of your heart, is the level of illumination and understanding you have. The level of illumination and understanding you have. I'm seeing the number 11. I want you to bring all those people out. 11. I just saw fire. And I saw the number 11. There is something God is doing in these families. This 11 is not just the individuals. He's locating the individuals for the sake of their families. I stretch my hands. These 11 people, please bring them out. 11, bring them out. We hail you. We worship you. We hail you, Most High. We hail you. We worship you. We hail you, Most High. We hail you. We worship you. Oh, visit the families, oh God. Turn their situations around. Hallelujah. Please bring them out. I want you to be very sensitive. I'm hearing the word Savior. And God is saying he's imparting grace on those that God is going to be using literally to change their families i don't know where you are but if you are part of those people grace is coming on you now bring them out in the name of jesus god is separating people there is a consecration happening in the spirit because you have been identified as that battle axe that god is going to be using to rewrite the story of your family i don't know where you are but i stretch my hands in the name of Jesus, may that grace locate you now. Please bring them out quickly. May that grace apakatos kebraskiba. Kebre kete kaparus katebash. Krate keparus katabranda gata. Bring them out. Shalaga brada kebara gosiata. Kabranda kebara kos katabraka Bring them out. Please don't be distracted. That's why you came. That's why you came. The Lord is still revealing to me. The Spirit of God is moving. Row to row, place to place. Picking men up. The ones who will be saviors. I hear that word again. Saviors. It is like a, a spiritual recruiting. It's time for God to visit your life, visit your family. But he will always need a man. And that man is the one he's finding now. Bring them out. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hi, 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 Glory be to God. Bring them out. Hi, 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 Glory be to God. Hi, 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 Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Shaba kapara da 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 ba. Ai 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 ya. By the name Jane. I'm hearing the name Jane. J A N E. Jane. Jane. Alanta Sabra Keparaku Sevrestia. I'm hearing the name Jane. The Lord wants to bring mighty deliverance. I tell you, there is a strong anointing in this place. As it's happening here, it's happening all over the overflows and also the airwaves. I'm hearing the name Jane. Before we sit down, Jane, who is Jane? I want to speak to your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a very interesting vision. I'm seeing like a mango tree and I'm seeing mangoes fall down and they are wasting. They don't stay in the tree. And the Lord is telling me this is the issue of fruitfulness that has been happening for a family. Miscarriages again and again. They never stay. I pray for the family of Jane. Every spirit that has hindered fruitfulness, I stretch my hands now. Let that altar catch fire now. Let it catch fire now. Let it aparosketa. Let it catch fire now. I bring liberty to the family of Jane. Every altar eating up children, destroying fruitfulness by the power of the Holy Ghost, it comes to an end now. Every family suffering from barrenness, unfruitfulness of any kind in the name of Jesus Christ, let that play come to an end now. Believe what you are hearing. Let that play come to an end now. Let that play come to an end now. That a mango tree with fruit, it doesn't stay until it's ripe and it keeps falling down. And you are looking at the tree, the leaves are there, but it is not producing. I say it again, if there is anyone here or anyone you know trusting God for the fruit of the womb, this is the miracle service that delivers your results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now let me stretch my hands over all that have come to the front. I didn't ask you to come out just to waste my time or your time. I pray for you, everyone who is in front here, for those that are now becoming battle axes for the kingdom, the anointing that you need to return back as a warrior, I stretch my hands from here. May that grace rest on you now. May that grace rest on you now. And for everyone who is out here, 
because of an oppression of darkness that God located you by the spirit the spirit responsible for this I speak as one sent let them go now let them go now let them go now release their destinies now in the name of Jesus Christ for the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not everything that is darkness we bring light now by the spirit we bring light by the spirit we bring light by the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ please return to your seat rejoicing your miracles are established forever in the name of Jesus those who can go just let them go those who are still under the anointing just let them be please sit down and let's finish up the second part because we need to allow the power of God to move in this place. There are people who have prayed and fasted. There are issues in your life that you must wave goodbye now. It is time and they must wave you back in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, the level of illumination and understanding. The second factor responsible for commanding results, unending, ever increasing results. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 16. That lady, just hold her. I want to speak. There's something I just saw. In the name of Jesus, release that lady's destiny now. I speak, I stretch my hands, let her go forever. In Jesus' name. There will be a serious deliverance here. There will be a serious deliverance here. Usher's grace for you, eh, my dear people, in the name of Jesus, because you have a lot of work to do today with what I'm seeing in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bring two people from this row. I just saw light on this row. The power of God is coming on two people, just on this row. Bring them out. There is a strong anointing coming on them. Please, very quickly, we have a lot to do. I'm seeing the power of God come where the international visitors are. I just saw light on one person. You have been praying. Bring the person out. The fire. In fact, two people I'm seeing. Please bring them out. Hmm. For someone you came tonight to contact the grace for signs and wonders. And in the name of Jesus, I'm not, I've not started the impartation yet, but there is something God wants to do. I stretch my hands. May my God release great power upon your life. Great power upon your ministry. Great power upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. The, two people from my international, is, is this one of them? Cameroon. I'm seeing deliverance happening for someone who came from Cameroon. Cameroon. I can imagine that there were a number of people, but Cameroon, this is very serious witchcraft. And God wants to bring this demonic thing to end. Cameroon. Do you have, if they are under the anointing, I need to know who is from Cameroon. Cameroon. Spirit of death people dying before their time you are coming from Cameroon ah, I'm seeing a snake what is this Harasho Barago Kradila Kaparandos Keata I give you authority over snakes and scorpions let them go now let them go now let them go now. Let them go now. The spirit of untimely death destroying people in this family. I decree and declare those altars are destroyed now by the blood of the eternal covenant. 
Listen, let me teach you something. Look up, please. Look up, please. When you see, when you hear me say the word altar, let your mind not go to a place, a herbally shrine with stones. That's not spiritual intelligence. An altar is not a place. An altar is a system of authorization. What you call an altar that is built is only a reflection, a physical expression. Even if you destroy that shrine, it does not mean the altar has been destroyed. The system of authorization is what we call an altar. Are we together now? Yeah. I want to pray for you. Cameroon. Father, in the name of Jesus, for every of our lovely Cameroonian families that are here connected, here on ground or connected online. I don't know why God called your name, but right now, that plague of witchcraft, help this gentleman. I command it be delivered now. Shame and reproach that has plagued your family it comes under arrest in the name of Jesus. The Lord is showing me a family. The hand of God is going to come upon you now. When women marry, they must return back to their husband's homes. This is what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that whatever makes that happen, by the blood of the eternal covenant, it is hereby destroyed now. It is hereby destroyed now. It is hereby destroyed now. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Lord is showing me something. Please don't be tired there. Eh? This is a miracle service. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and the spirit of the Lord is showing me Kogi State. That there is a mighty deliverance. Help them now that is coming upon Kogi state. Now it's a sign and a wonder. The moment God shows me the map and I see the people from that state, all those who are oppressed from that state, the power of God begins to touch them. It's a sign and a wonder. It's how God does. Therefore I'm praying, Kogi state, every enchantment and every divination that has tied men down, be released right now. Bring them out, be released right now. Every part of the state, Kogi state, I bring you liberty by the spirit. I bring you deliverance by the spirit. Spirits of untimely death, all kinds of yokes of darkness, be delivered now in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. This is koinonia for you. Matthew 4 and verse 16. Let's finish up. I'm giving you the second reason or the second basis, the second factor that controls unending supernatural results. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me someone you could not lift your hands very well. I don't know what happened to your, your is it, um, is it a, I don't know if it's a, a bone condition or whatever it is. Wherever you are, I want you to lift it now. Lift it now. You will see that a miracle has happened. And if that miracle has happened, stand up where you are. I want to know those that the power of God has touched. Your right arm. I'm feeling that pain just right here. This is what is happening to someone. But in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, as God has given this instruction, I declare be healed now. Be healed now. Now do what you couldn't do. Stretch your hands. Don't be afraid. In the name of Jesus, whether it's a bone condition, whatever it is, go ahead. Are you seeing what Jesus is doing? Go ahead, stretch your hands. That devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus. Shortly we'll be taking testimonies and when it's time for testimonies, check yourself and then you come out. Just sit down. I need to do justice to this. Matthew 4, 16. But the people which sat in darkness saw a great light and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death it says light is sprung up so you're sitting and you're remaining in darkness it describes a position of defeat failure stagnation and everything like it but it says they saw a great light 
And remember in Isaiah 60 and verse 1, when that light that you've now seen comes to you, then you will arise and you will shine. Arise from that place no matter how long you have stayed. In John chapter 8 and verse 12, John 8, 12, Jesus, then spake Jesus again unto them saying, watch this now, I am the light of the world, he says, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Please read the last sentence. But shall have the light of life. There is something in the Bible called the light of life. That means the light that gives life. The light that gives life. In preparing this charge, those two words just, just, it just talk out for me. Light and life. Two words that science still has a hard time defining. Defining light and defining life. When you ask a scientist what is light, they will only give you numerical expressions because it's a reality beyond the scope of the mind. And when you ask them more complicated is even the definition of life. You will not get any direct intellectual definition of life because these are not elements that begun with the earth realm light and life Jesus said you shall receive the light of life the light that gives you life hallelujah in basic biology we teach about living things and non-living things and we said when a thing is living there are certain qualities and certain characteristics that help us to know that an organism is alive. And then when it ceases to be alive, we test it's been dead because we now find the absence of those things that are signs of its life. And I try to study what are the things among, there are many things that are called characteristics of living things, but I found out about three or four of them are most outstanding. Number one is movement and motion. One of the ways you will know that something is alive is that there will always be movement and motion. Number two, production and reproduction. Anything that is alive produces or reproduces. And number three, growth. 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 Number four, exchange. You call it respiration or you call it excretion. There is always an exchange. Replacing the imperfect for the perfect. Are we together? There will always be an exchange. Anything that is alive must have experienced these four things, these four qualities. There must be movement, motion. So when a body is dead, Isaac Newton taught us in his law of mechanics that it will remain in that state except compelled by an external force to act otherwise. Otherwise, it remains there because dead things ordinarily do not move as far as science has revealed to us. Are we together now? Yeah. And then production, reproduction. Everything that is alive grows. Listen, that means you can test whether you are alive in destiny or not using these indices. If there is no movement in your life, if there is no production and reproduction, if there is no exchange, if there is no growth, even if you are breathing, you are dead. And the Bible says, when he went to the tomb of Lazarus, how did they know Lazarus was dead? Because all these things stopped working in his life. And when he said, Lazarus, come forth, the first thing that happened was movement. Lazarus left the grave and came out and he said, lose him, remove those grave clothes and let him go. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Your degree of illumination, your degree of understanding as far as the results you desire are concerned will be what will govern the manifestation of results in your life. You may love God with a pure and a sincere heart, but in a state of spiritual ignorance, bankruptcy of sufficient light. And my goodness, I taught you here and I've taught you for many years 
Listen to me. That lights are in levels. The Bible says he made many lights. Say many lights. And then he made two great lights. In our physical world here, we have different expressions of light. The chiefest of them that we know is the sunlight. But that is not the only light. The headlight of a car, headlamp also gives light. There is torch light. There is the light from a matchstick. There is candle light. Is that true? There is light from your phone. And do you know that every time you want to transit, the lesser light will help you until you access the greater light. Then you will not need the lesser light. If the light goes off in your house, perhaps the first thing you will need is your phone light. Or maybe a match, a, a match, uh, uh, what they call it now, to light the matches. Because you will need that light. As soon as you own the candle, you don't need that one again. You will off it. Hallelujah. And all kinds of lights or most kinds of lights are not needed in the daytime because there is sunlight. You most likely will not need your security lights and even the light in your car. You don't need it in the day because there is a brighter and a greater light. If the lights in this place suddenly went off, you may switch on your phone. It is light, but not enough to let you see everybody here. So you need high level spiritual illumination if you must reign in light. Carrying a torchlight dimension of light and wanting a stadium dimension of result is flattery. You will need a, your heart flooded with light. Hallelujah. And light in scripture, as you know, is illumination that comes from the word. The entrance of your word, not just the reading, gives light and understanding to the simple. It is on the strength of that light that you command results. Please hear me. I have taught you, and maybe I should take a minute to quickly just do that recap. That for every result, say results. Please let me have your attention. For every result in the kingdom, there is a mystery that connects to it. So you can literally list, have a list of results. Breakthrough, healing, open doors, you name them. Everything you wrote on your prayer request and everything that brought you here to receive from the Lord. Connecting every result that you desire in the kingdom. There is a mystery. Another word for principle. There is a mystery that connects it. Ultimately, it is the power of God that is the principal sponsor of every result. But that that power is only activated when the mystery connected to the result you desire is engaged. Do you understand this? So, prosperity and financial abundance in the kingdom. Listen to me. There is a result that controls it. Lifting, there is a result that controls it. Speed, there is a result or a mystery that controls it. So just knowing what you want does not give you what you want. You must know the mystery that must be engaged to release the power of God to make that become your reality. Apostle, I want speed in my life. Then you need to know the mystery by light that translates to a life of speed. And the Bible teaches us that the mystery that controls speed is waiting. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. From waiting, they will start running and not be tired. They will not be weary. They will walk and not faint. So if you want speed in your life and waiting is a problem, you have violated the mystery connected to that outcome. You will not see it in your life. Are we together? I desire financial abundance. Now you need to know the mysteries. The principle of diligence. The principle of favor. The principle of value. Are we together now? The power to get wealth. All of these forces work together to bring you abundance. Selecting the one you want or selecting the one convenient for you will only end you disappointed. When you are taught to cook, there are certain ingredients that unless you put them in the meal, tasting them like that is not pleasant to you because you were not supposed to lick or take or swallow them like that. 
it is that reaction that happens while the cooking is going on that translates it to become ultimately a beautiful meal you will enjoy. That's how spiritual principles are. The working of miracles demand understanding. I need to add this plus this plus this and you come up with a spiritual meal that brings glory to God and the saints. Many believers desire results. They know what they want, but they have not been disciplined enough to understand the mysteries that are connected to what they want. Healing. I desire healing. What is the mystery connected to healing? The presence of the man of God is not the only factor. There is something called the hearing of faith. Every time you see healing in the Bible, the people must have the opportunity to have the hearing of faith. The only exemption is the raising of the dead. Hallelujah. So if you want to be healed, number one, you must hear the word of God. Number two, you must hear prophetic instructions from the man of God or whatever vessel God will be using. And then that hearing produces faith. You act in obedience. For instance, if you are holding a crutch, and it's time to pray and we say lift that crutch. Don't say I've been holding it for 10 years. You may remain there till we share the grace. How does Jesus see someone who has never walked and he says stand up by yourself. Roll away your mat and go home. It is at the point of obedience that the power of God is released. That is how the healing ministry works. How about a change of story? And restoration every time you find things go down in the Bible it is the office of the prophetic to bring restoration that means you are here saying I've lost opportunity lost jobs and the rest listen for when a prophetic word comes and you receive not just by shouting amen you can shout amen and both your head and your heart is closed and it just leaves you and goes to someone whose heart is open. You know what amen means? Amen means let it be so as spoken by the mouth of the Lord. Hmm. Hallelujah. Listen, those you call champions in the kingdom are not necessarily men who are great in themselves. They are just people who by the mercies of God, backed up by their determination and discipline, have found the mysteries connected to the various spiritual outcomes that men can desire. So with the intelligence of a consultant, someone comes and says, I have been trusting God for open doors. And the moment you mention the problem, the man of God, his spirit just goes to the mystery that brings that result. So if you come and meet me and say, Apostle, my doors have been closed. I will, I will vet you against three things. Number one, what key have you been using to open the door? Because a wrong key, even if a key, does not open a door. So we have to vet the correctness of the key. If it's a wrong key, we tell you keep it for another outcome. This outcome, for instance, praying and fasting alone as the ultimate strategy for prosperity is using perhaps not a wrong key, but an incomplete key. There are keys that you have, to, you have to open the padlock, then open the knob many times. And you just pull the padlock alone. And yet the one it takes to turn the door, or the door may be open, but to know how to pull it and take it backwards to open, most people do not know. So you vet the person against the use of the right key. Or number two, if you do not even have access to the key, if it's another man's house you are entering, you have to know how to knock. Because if you try to use the key in another man's house, you are called a thief. Hello? You are called what? A thief. If there is someone else at the other side of that door, you must knock. So I will vet your understanding of relationships. Do you understand the law of honor? Do you understand the law of value? If the person whose door you are knocking is not a friend, you will not open it. If an arm robber knocks your house, you call the police. You don't open it for him. But if your friend knocks the door, ah, you are most welcome. Sometimes you can be tired, but when you remember that he's a friend. So apostle, doors of opportunities have been closed. Like I started when I, when, when I started teaching. I want to know what you did with the last open door. The person who paid your rent, what did you tell him? 
Oh, I can't even remember. I threw his number. Aha. Uh -huh. We are diagnosing the problem now. It's not enough to know outcomes. You are spiritually intelligent to the degree to which you understand the mysteries that connect to the outcomes. And then, because the hearts of men can be desperately wicked, there are times that the person at that door will refuse to open because the name of the person is Herod. At that point, you don't need friendship. You need power. This is where we come in now because we don't come to open the door. By the Spirit of God, we scatter the foundation. And the Bible says that when the power of God came, it rattled the foundation and all doors open. Key or no key, all doors open. Like it's happening for someone now. In the name of Jesus Christ, a door can be open and you can pass, but it can close over your children. But when that door is scattered, especially a prison door, everybody comes out. They become beneficiaries of your spiritual diligence. Not everybody was praying in the prison, but everybody came out. Hallelujah. Diligence. Apostle, I want to experience increase in ministry. Men will not just hear you because you have something to say. Believe me when I tell you this. I think I'm sincere. I have knowledge of Greek and Hebrew. You'll be disappointed a thousand times. Men are too busy. They are too desperate, too hungry, and sometimes too frustrated to just fall into the biases of whatever it is. There is a hear ye him anointing. But when that grace truly comes, you will know it is there because it speaks. Thou shalt take Joshua, the son of Nun, in whom is the spirit, and that thou shalt anoint him, he says, that should be maybe Numbers, I can't remember, something 18, maybe 27, 18 or so, one of those scriptures. And then he says, thou shalt take some of thine honor, yeah, in whom is the spirit, and thou shalt lay your hands on him, 19 now, watch this, and set him before, go, go to verse 18, go to verse 18. He said, take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man whom is the spirit, and lay your hands upon him, verse 19. And set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight. Read verse 20. It says, and thou shalt put some of your honor upon him. Why? That the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. You need this as a leader. If not, you will be angry and saying, why are people not listening to me? It's because I'm Yoruba. It's because I'm Igbo. It's not true. It's because you are bankrupt of the grace. This honor. Is an anointing, it's a mantle. When it comes upon you, even a generation will hearken unto you. Is someone listening? Yeah. Tonight, we have come with several desires. Your desires represent outcomes that you want to see in your life. But I am telling you that those desires are connected to several mysteries. And that in addition to receiving prayer and all of these things, you must have a determination as a believer to patiently learn the mysteries that must be engaged, that are responsible for the various outcomes that you need to actualize life and to actualize destiny. Longevity is controlled by a mystery. Sentiments is not one of the mysteries. You must know, what does it take to live long? I think the thing just happens. Those who die, die. Those who live, live. As painful as it is, I submit to you by the integrity of Scripture, it is not true. Hmm. Let God be true. And all men liars. But if you do not know the mystery and you are guessing, make him blind, bold face. I know I will not die. You may be surprised. How about lifting? What takes a man from your lowly estate? Because there are many of us here, all the overflows outside, following online. You are wondering, Lord, what does it take to lift me from where I am? What does it take to lift me, oh God? And you find out that the lifting, lifting itself has a mystery. The mystery of lifting is that you must know the Lord as Ebenezer. If you just know him as deliverer, it will not lift you. It will deliver you. But you must know the, have the revelation of him as Ebenezer. That stone that helps men. 
and then you must understand the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers if you do not understand the ministry of destiny helpers you will only see lifting in your dreams and visions you may never enter the reality of it because I have taught you that who hates you does not matter but in this world of men who likes you matters hallelujah even if you are Jesus Christ and you are hanging on the cross it will take Herod giving Joseph of Arimathea permission to bring that body down so there are many people who do not understand these things believers are you learning something tonight so that you don't just say I know God will do it you hear what believers say I know no my God is too faithful you are right but you are wrong you are right potentially but you are wrong because your disappointment will keep recycling as your ignorance permits it but the day you get tired and say this miracle service is the moment a change of story always comes with the prophetic deliverance from all kinds of yokes of shame the prophetic and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet where he preserved healing listen there are few people in the Bible who receive healing by themselves go and read the Bible most times over 95 percent of healing it was a man of God Jesus himself or a vessel bringing a word of faith and then the potential recipient believing the word from God and receiving there are few people in the Bible who were healed by themselves so that the moment you just walk in ignorance you can walk in health by yourself and it's true that you can speak the word of God because the word of God is living and active are we together but God's standard procedure is to have men he will send who will speak a word of healing and you believe it and that sickness will leave and you do not believe it you see the same way you can stay in a room and receive Jesus by yourself but most of the salvation of experience of people came through a preacher that God used whether the preacher spoke as a person, whether some tape or CD somewhere, whether some track somewhere, it took someone outside of yourself to make you aware. Even the utopian eunuch needed help to a point that the Holy Ghost had to move Peter to go and help that man. Is someone learning now? I'm saying this because in the next few minutes, Already people have received their miracles, but as we begin to pray and see the God that heals and the God that changes stories, I want you to understand that this is how the system of God works. You believe in God, but you also believe in the servant that he has sent. If you believe in God alone, it is not enough for the manifestation of the miraculous. One prophetic word that is believed, received with understanding, and you return back not knowing what has rested on your head and the next thing you will see that a climate just changes over your life that those who were rejecting you you return back home and meet them waiting and say something told me to bless you something did not tell them it's an anointing the anointing speaks it does the anointing speaks that something that is growing within you satanic objects moving in your body roaming around your body from your head to your body to your feet machines cannot diagnose it but you the victim you know it is there when you tell people they say I, you are just playing games maybe you are just seeing things that one needs more than therapy it needs power say power, power. let the devil hear it power. Mm, needs power not discussions not negotiation power Perhaps some organ in your body right now while you are sitting is already failing. You heard the testimony of the dear lady. An organ, your heart is failing and this is what is responsible for this. No. In the name of Jesus, let there be creative miracles in this place. Perhaps you may be here or your loved one, all the overflows outside, maybe following online. Do you know I am humbled and, and, and I say this Thanks to all the CMDs and those who have made their hospitals. Do you know how many hospitals right now, not just in Nigeria, clinics, 
you know, all kinds of medical platforms that are connected right now because they have seen that the power of God, they have agreed. I'm glad that medicine is coming into partnership with genuine spirituality. That is a combo that is needed, especially in this end time. Hallelujah. That there are doctors right now, there are patients right now watching as I'm speaking. And for those of you who are connecting from any hospital, I want you to prepare your spirit that in the next few minutes, the power that raised Christ from the dead, in the name of Jesus, those incurable, inexplainable sicknesses that are just eating life. Someone is emaciating, it's not HIV, the organs are well because machines don't diagnose spirits. Hmm. Machines don't diagnose spirits. Hallelujah. How about those who are in all kinds of trouble right now? Financial trouble? Trouble with your destiny? Perhaps your rent is not paid? How about projects that have been grounded? You started building since 2018. Till now, it has not even reached Lintel level. It's no longer a testimony. This one is not just building. You need restoration. Restoration is not when the building is completed. Restoration is when God does something and blesses you with more than one house. And honors you and you will see him you you are able to see the hand of God in your life someone I, I can't remember if it was koinonia here or maybe a personal testimony who got an employment letter and while the person was rejoicing an email was sent again that it was a mistake why must it be a mistake when it gets to my turn say no way in the name of Jesus Christ how do you see something good? You are almost touching it. In the name of Jesus, let me speak over someone. Whatever has come so close to you, just left for your hand to reach, and yet it was manipulated by witchcraft. I call upon the God of my covenant. Your hand will hold it this night. 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 Hold it this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. A helper that promises you, come on Monday, he says. You get to his office and he's acting as if you are an assassin that came. Cannot even remember he told you that. And let me tell you the truth. See, anything you are not ready to confront, you are giving it longevity in your life. Did you hear what I said? You must get angry in your spirit. Yes, sir. Doors open just when you are entering. Others enter, then they stop you. And they say, wait. The woman with the issue of blood knew about the fact that water was stirred. I hope you know they were in the same generation. She was not near the water. The person in Mark 5, in, in John 5, was still in the generation of the woman with the issue of blood. That one found himself near the water. The woman sat down outside of the gate or outside of the city when she heard about Jesus. I'm sure she told herself, there is no hope of me getting close to the pool of Bethesda. But I say to myself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. I believe in seasons. I've taught you about seasons and timings. But I've also taught you that the day Jesus comes to your life, a season has opened. Are we together now? Yeah. By the natural course of life, there are things that should happen with time and in season. But Jesus becomes a legitimate exception to all things. He can step into your life today and say it is not next year, it is this year. Um, could that be a prophecy for someone that it is not next year oh, it is this year I say it again it is this year you will see the faithfulness of God this year the job this year the child this year the marriage this year the lifting this year in the name of Jesus Christ God has chosen the foolishness of prophetic words to rewrite the destinies of men. That a word comes and you say amen with understanding. And God stamps it in heaven. 
and no devil of darkness will come and rewrite it. Hallelujah. While you are here in Koinonia, perhaps outside, perhaps in the overflow, as a prophetic word is coming, my God, there are angels you cannot see going around Abuja, being sent by the word of God. Some of them maybe to national assembly, others to certain ministries, others to certain places. There is a destiny helper sleeping somewhere and an angel of the Lord will come like Joseph, like, like Gabriel to Mary and wake him up and say, God is speaking to you. Come through dreams like he did Abimelech. Listen, Abraham never begged Abimelech to give him anything. It was because Abimelech had a dream. God first warned him about Abraham's wife. And to be able to restitute what he has done or what he intended to do, he gave Abraham gifts. Chapter 12, a prophetic word comes. Chapter 13, he returns with untold prosperity. I believe in diligence. I have taught you to be diligent even financially. But please, when you hear me speak over your finances, I know you are a businessman, but still say amen and receive it. Because this God you see can turn your life in literally 24 hours. And if you, listen, and if you don't believe what I'm saying, then it means you are not a Christian. You don't know the God that you gave your life to. Sometimes, in a bid to exalt principles, we downplay God. And we say sometimes carelessly, we find ourselves saying things that, yes, we know subconsciously that God can change stories. But the truth is that many of us, because of our carnality, we have not come to a point where we agree that God can actually change stories. Changing your story in a short period of time is not endorsing laziness. It's because he knows your pain and he knows time has been lost. So he comes in as a God of mercy. Do you not believe in his mercy again? For someone here by this time tomorrow, in the name of Jesus, may my God do something that has not been done in your life from January till September. I prophesy it upon your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. The easiest way for God to raise men is to connect them. Oh dear, I wish I had time. This is not, this is a miracle service. Listen, you need to hear what I will tell you. Not everybody, hear me, not everybody will begin the journey of their prosperity by themselves. There are others, your prosperity is already in the prosperity of others. You will prosper by partnership, not pioneering. If you don't understand this, you will be poor for the rest of your life. It is not laziness. There are people God has placed a mantle on. The prosperity God has given them is beyond what they need for their own destiny. Lot, waiting to hear God by yourself will keep you poor. You need to find Abraham quickly. If you are waiting to say, God told Abraham, he must speak to me. You will grow old and you will never rise. If you are Abraham, don't wait for Lot. Hear God. But if you are Lot, you will hear God through Abraham and connect to Abraham to rise. This is a mystery. Not everybody excels by pioneering. Many will excel through their connection. Did you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. In Genesis 13, you put Lot here, you put Abraham here. You will not know who God called and who was blessed. That is the power of connection. When you put two candles here, watch this, and you light a match, you put it on this candle, and you use this candle to light this one, and you keep two of them. Do you know that you will not even know which one lit which? This is a mystery that many arrogant people do not understand. In the name of trying to find God for themselves, finding the key to prosper for themselves, you will get into trouble and time will be going. There are people God has raised already. Discern the grace upon their life and stop wasting your destiny. Tap with understanding and accelerate in destiny. what I've said. 
there are people today based on your prophetic blue the prophetic blueprint of your life you would have been a mighty healing evangelist by now but pride will not allow you to humble yourself and in addition to walking with God I've taught you on encounters but God has created a system within his body not everybody will meet God at the same level not everybody will have a visionary encounter to see Jesus are we together now there are a few people not because of their righteousness but because of his mercy it's an election of grace he will reveal himself to them and deposit something eternal within them that every time you desire to walk in certain dimensions he will refer you to them you will tap with humility and accelerate even if you will later be greater than them you will start by receiving from them and there are many people who do not know this some of you have come here right now it is true that you came to receive an idea but maybe what God came to do was to give you a grace that connects you to somebody who, have, who has paid the 20-year price that you want to pay by yourself. Someone has paid it already and God has worked on his heart and is ready to release when God says he should. Why do you want to waste your destiny in a lot of carelessness? There are believers like that. Not everybody will build a house by themselves. I am telling you, I'm not teaching you irresponsibility, but I can tell you, not everybody there are those who understand god's program so much god gave them grace to build among the houses they built your own is there it's just that while they were building god did not tell them it's for you your assignment now is not just to start building one for yourself now i'm not you can go ahead and build but i am just telling you this is how the kingdom works if it takes 20 years to rise and you that gave your life to jesus late you want to wait for 20 years before you rise get set to get into trouble unbelievers know this what then is the excellency of a leverage it took you 30 years to know God to prosper to find purpose if it takes your child 30 years you failed I'm saying this to some of you because part of the prophetic word you are going to receive tonight is not just a prophetic word for your own personal creativity but a grace that connects you to somebody who already has your prayer request like this today now <laughs> hallelujah you believe that in my own little way with all humility God has used me in my own little way to be an answer to age-long prayers of people. This is in our own capacity. There is a man of God who may be laboring. I'm going to fast for 40 days. I must get the anointing for expansion. Fast for something else. Fast to know God more. Fast to understand your purpose more. But if it's influence you are looking for, the grace is already there. Don't trouble yourself with sorrow and meet witches and wizards as angels. There are people who by election of grace, this grace bodily resides upon them with proof. Follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Are you learning now? Yeah. Imagine that you are, you are going to the junction and you have to wait for some boss to come and pick you. And you see someone, he may not be going your direction, but he decides to stop. And says where are you going I'm not talking of a, a kidnapper genuine responsible Christian and he stops and says where are you going and you say perhaps maybe I'm going to shop right or I'm going to one of the malls and the person says well I'm going somewhere else but you remind me of myself before I've decided to pick you and take you to shop right most likely that person is not a right but most likely he will even pay for you but he now says enter you say no I want to get there by myself and the man says I respect you rain is coming I respect you they leave you there he comes back after two hours you are drenched in rain because of pride and you stand there the boss you are waiting for reverse because of rain and you are standing there you would have received help with honor this is what is happening spiritually to many people there are already doors God is opening how many mantles do you want to get you think you are the first to carry it Ah, 
Elohim Ah Elohim Ah Elohim Shalabala tonight let me give you two reasons or three why we are gathered here and then we'll be ready to get proper into the miracle service you'll be a first a very quick walk number one we are gathered here to acknowledge the God who loves and has the power to make the Saints experience victory we are gathered tonight to acknowledge the God who loves and the God who has power to make the saints experience victory. In Daniel 3, 28 and 29, Nebuchadnezzar was forced to acknowledge, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, who had sent his angels and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve or worship any God except their own God. As a result, I make a decree, he says, that every people, nation, language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill. I like this because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. We are here to acknowledge the God who loves and the God who has the power to make the saints experience victory. Number two, why are we here? We are here tonight to engage the mysteries of the kingdom that are connected to the various results we desire. We are here to engage the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom that are connected to the results or the outcomes that we desire. John chapter 2. When you read from verse 5, verse 7, verse 9, John 2, his mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do. An instruction came, verse 7. And Jesus said, Give us verse 7, please. Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up. And then, verse 9, the Bible says, When the rulers had tasted the water that was made wine. Look at the dynamics. Whatever he tells you to do, do. He now gives the instruction and the water turns to wine. Why are we here? To engage the mysteries of the kingdom. Every man's water can become wine. It depends on what you hear and it depends on what you obey. For someone, your water can remain water because you didn't even care to find out whether there is a miracle worker among the crowd. For someone, your water can turn to wine. No matter how, how late it has been in the feast, God can take away that shame by turning water to wine. There are times when he will empower your machine to produce the wine, but there are times the urgency will not allow that process. He can bypass it legitimately and make water immediately to become wine. There are times God will empower your farm so that you have a bumper harvest, but there are times the hunger, you will not even survive dry season. He would bring bread immediately. When you eat, then he will now teach you how to farm well. The same one who gives seed to the sower and to the eater is the God you serve. Make sure you don't receive seed alone. He gives both seed and bread. Bread is processed seed. You can consume it immediately. And seed is to help you to be able to farm for tomorrow. Waiting for bread every day may leave you in disappointment. But there are times that the hunger that plagues you, whether spiritually or economically, when you are in trouble and you are about to go into prison in one week, you don't need business ideas. You need a miracle. When you caught up the prison now and you are rehabilitated, you now learn financial principles properly. When you are owing rent and someone comes and says, there are five keys to increase, your landlord is going to throw you out by 12. 
you don't need the knowledge of how to pay rent. You need a miracle fast. Otherwise, they'll throw you out of the house. You can learn financial principles in the rain. Learn to receive both seed and bread. Many careless believers only reach for bread. And God says, no, I don't always give bread. I give bread as a sign of mercy now. Then I give you seed to teach you how to sow so that you don't have to be in that emergency again. Believers were never designed to live off miracles. Miracles are a sign that principles were initially violated. So he comes in as an act of his mercy. When you are now restored, he will teach you the principles that make you to work excellently and more efficiently. Is someone learning now? But tonight, there are people who don't need seed. Seed can come tomorrow. There are people who need bread. For instance, if the doctors have diagnosed you that you have six months to live, teaching me principles of dieting will not help me at this point. I'm dying. Let me be healed first. Let me know that I will, my organs are not packed up. Then I can go back and you can now teach me. Are we together now? Someone who has lost money you are now teaching the person and saying, you know what? You can start this way. It is true, but that person is in trouble now. God gives bread to the eater and seed to the sower. And everybody has hands to sow and a mouth to eat. Give us this day, not our daily seed, our daily bread. I'm saying that so that when we begin to pray, you lift up your hands to receive both bread and seed. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. When you receive seed, you now understand how to sow, spiritually speaking, and so on and so forth. You can now know how to sow to the spirit through prayer, through word study, so that you have a robust life that will, will gain invincibility over demons. But right now, you need help. You need assistance. The urgency in your life right now, waiting until you learn these principles pragmatically, the devil may take your life even before understanding comes. So you need bread. When you have bread for your nourishment and you have strength, then you can use your seed. Are we together now? We are here to engage the mysteries of the kingdom, connected to the results we desire. Finally, number three, why are we here tonight? We are here to witness the living God at work in the lives of God's people. We are here to witness the living God, the power of the living God at work in the lives of his people, causing many to know him and to love him more. I like this. John 2, 23. We are here to witness the power of the living God in the lives of his people. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name. Why? When they saw the miracles which he did. They didn't just believe because there was a preacher. They believed when they saw. They believed when they saw. They believed when they saw. There are things when men see, it enhances their believing. It reminds them again, for some, maybe for the first time, that there is a God that is greater than any charm. There is a God that is greater than any speakings, any generational cause. There is a God that is greater than any orchestration of darkness. And it is that God we have come to reveal. And ladies and gentlemen, if this is why you are here tonight, then I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ to an encounter that you will live to testify. I know that many are already receiving. And let me tell you the truth. I know, let me say this. I know there are several overflows here and then several others outside. Sometimes my heart pains me because those inside here are a minute fraction of the so many thousands of people scattered across this whole ground and then not to talk of the many more connecting online and you you don't if i had my way i want everybody to be in one place where i can see everybody to encourage you as you are seeing me but you know no matter the auditorium at least for now the size will not be able to take us but let me tell you this i'm saying that to encourage someone you may think that these manifestations is just for those who found their way in the main auditorium. And you may be saying, I mean, maybe the basement, any of the overflows or outside, or maybe fine America, Canada. Can I tell you the truth? The lady who was healed in one of the synoptic accounts, 
the centurion said i am a man under authority you don't need to come to my house he said speak the word only and jesus said when he looked at him the bible says that very hour when his servants came you can be outside and yet be the first to be healed be the first to be lifted that you have proximity to the man of God does not automatically, it's just a psychological consolation. Let me tell you the truth. As far as the realm of the spirit is concerned, the believer is the one who receives. Not the one close to the miracle worker. Many people were close to Jesus and they did not receive. Others were far off, but with faith in their hearts, they received. So let me bring a word of encouragement to the many thousands of people outside, those across all the overflows and those following online. Wherever you are, please hear me. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of the living God. When it's time to pray, let your hearts be enlarged, be open to receive because the God of heaven is no respecter of person. Are you ready to receive now? Please rise up on your feet. Say, Father. Father. One more time. Say, Father. Father. I, decree, I decree. And I declare. I declare that in the name of Jesus. Jesus answers. answers to every issue of concern. Issue of concern. I, receive I receive now. Go ahead and pray. Answers. Health answers. Destiny answers. Marital answers fruitfulness answers someone is praying in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I receive answers 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 in the name of Jesus I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorified breathe Lord going to do a very quick one right now there are three areas of focus tonight number one prophesying liberty 
for the various aspects of our lives. Number two, ministering deliverance to people who are oppressed. Because most of the issues you call prayer requests, the truth is that they are signifying the presence of spirits that may be operating for some on legal basis. This is where the ministry of the blood comes. That the blood sustains the unique ability to bring a separation. And you will find out that with that separation, many requests to be answered in a moment. And then I want to take a few minutes and pray for the sick. Those of you who are sick or came with sick loved ones, make sure you release your heart, your faith to be healed right now. Hopefully we'll have the time and in a few minutes, uh, now because we're hurrying up, the moment you have a testimony, I'm going to ask you to walk out very quickly. Some of you who have already received will take a few testimonies and then will enter the stage of prophetic words. That declaration is important to me because that is how many of you will return with testimonies. Not everybody is sick. Not everybody may be oppressed or have any kind of demonic influence of all sorts. But I can be sure that everybody is tired of their current level and that they want to scale heights in the spirit and in destiny. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I want to pray for those who have experienced all kinds of satanic issues. My Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Many sicknesses are connected to spirits. It is true. There are many demonic influences plaguing families. Now I'm going to pray and it's going to be, I will ask you in our manner here to shout the name Jesus. And when I do, with humility of heart and the fullness of faith, I'd like you to obey that prophetic instruction. And very quickly, I'd like you to bring out those who will be under the anointing. Now the ushers are limited. Please do me a favor. If someone, maybe you are, especially you're a worker, those under the anointing, when I ask you to bring them out, if there's someone under the anointing close to you, just help to bring them out. You don't have to wait for the ushers. They are limited. There are literally tens of thousands of people all over and there. there's so much they can do. Father, in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, here at this miracle service, you gave us authority and you gave us power over snakes, scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. You gave us authority over witchcrafts, altars, and every kind of satanic manifestation. Father, there are lives here, there are destinies here that have been under the siege of darkness as individuals, as families, as businesses, plaguing their health, their finances, and various aspects of their lives. This is why your people came. And Lord, I pray right now that as your people shout that name that is above every other name, every spirit that has tied down lives, that has tied down destinies, it is time for you to give way. Ladies and gentlemen, at the count of three, I want you to shout that name that is above every other name, that name that defeated sin, Satan, hell, and the grave. And as you shout it, let every spirit that is not the Holy Spirit of God, it will clear the way and it will release your destiny now. And then ushers very quickly, please bring those under the anointing. Are you ready now? Thank you, Jesus. One, my God, I sense a strong anointing. Two, three, shout Jesus. Help them please. Release every destiny now. Every destiny bow. Be released now. Outside, inside, yokes of darkness, curses. Let God's people go now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, we are still praying. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing hands tied. I've seen this many times. Every hand that has been tied, right now I decree and declare, let the, let the fire of the Holy Ghost bring a separation now. 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 The spirit of delay, whose destiny has been delayed here, whose destiny is not rising here, 
I'm seeing fire falling. Father, let the altar of delay right now at the count of three, let it be broken. One, two, three, break now. Break now. Destiny delay, be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. I'm seeing a veil, a veil, a covering stopping your glory from being seen. In the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is. I stretch my paracatos. Help that lady, my God. In the name of Jesus, that veil that has covered your glory, I tear off that veil now. I tear off that veil now. I tear off that veil now. Oh, 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 let me speak to those outside. There is something God wants to do to those outside. Those outside, I want you to lift your hands. I stretch my hands right now in the name that is above all names. Those at the overflow outside, at the count of three, those outside, I want you to shout Jesus. I'm seeing altars on fire and the Lord is telling me that these are altars of untimely death sitting on the destinies of people some of you have lost your loved ones i don't know why god is speaking to me about those outside right now i decree and declare outside at the count of three one two three shout jesus break now break now break now break now the spirits of untimely death you are under arrest by the power of the holy ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Release them now. Everyone appointed unto death, I release you now. I release you now. I release you now. Shame and disfavor in the name of Jesus to a point where people avoid you like a plague because it's as if you are carrying bad luck. They whisper to one another and say, don't come near this person. The last time I came, I went down. I pray for you. Every negative mark upon your head that makes people to reject you, in the name of Jesus, I wipe it out tonight. 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 Hallelujah. Now, I'm seeing the Lord heal someone right now. I'm soon to begin to pray for the, the sick. This person you had fibroid years ago. You went to the hospital and they operated you and is regrowing back again. This is a spiritual thing. I'm praying right now. This is what I see in my vision. I don't know who that person is. By the power of the Lord. That devil manifesting as fibroid. It dies now. It dies now. It dies now. Praise Adonai From the rising of the sun To the end of every day Praise Adonai All the nations of the earth All the angels and the saints Sing praise Adonai From the rising 
in the various overflows I speak to every spirit that has tied you down in the name of he who died and rose again this is koinonia a house that God has helped and I declare at the count of three you lose your hold on them and everything you have taken from their lives let there be a restoration at the count of three one two three go now go now Go now, never to return. Go now, never to remain. Go now, never to return. Their bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Their destinies are immune, fortified by the blood. In the name of Jesus Christ. Job chapter 42. Give us verse 10 and 11. Let me show you something. You can know when a demonic resistance holding you has left. The realm of the spirit and the physical realm will bear witness. Because the earth, listen to me, the earth, even water, is a witness. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. So the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. But 11 is where I'm really going to. What suddenly happened to him? You can know captivity has turned around. Watch this. Then there came unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before. Question, what drove them? You think they just left? You think they did? Every one of them started feeling like kite. What is, why is Job's issue coming to my heart? That's because something was corrected in the realm of the spirit. Watch this. The Bible says they did eat bread with him in his house. They bemoaned him and comforted him over the evil that the Lord had brought unto him. And then, this is how God restored him. Every man also gave him a piece of money. So they had it before while he was suffering. The same way your uncle has it and is aware that you are in this city. You have sent a text, sent a text. Stop sending a text. Come for miracle service. Carry an anointing upon your head. I hope you believe what I'm teaching you. Everyone gave him a piece of money. What kind of business was he going to start in that state of pain? How long would it take him? So, the Lord restored in the realm of the spirit, but physically things started happening. Can I tell you the truth? You can know, doctors, when a patient has malaria, how do you know the patient has malaria or typhoid? There are signs. Is that true? He goes to the hospital and there's what they call vital signs. Am I right, medical people? You now begin to check. Uh -uh. Temperature is running. The person is... Um, maybe vomiting, stooling, or doing whatever. How do you know the patient is recovering? You know the patient is recovering because things begin to change. Are there times when you take drugs and find out that the drug did not affect the intended change? You still go back to the doctor and say, this drug did not work. They will now do a further test and say, ah, we thought it was this. So just because it was a drug did not mean it solved every problem. As far as your body is concerned, you didn't take a drug. Even though you were on one week medication, your body did not recognize it because it was not the solution. Don't say, I have been praying. Don't say they prayed for me. When you take malaria drug for, for what now? Typhoid, it may not work, but it is still drug. Tonight, the right drug is coming on your head. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
as I'm declaring over you, you may not know what is changing. For some of you, as I'm declaring, it's not only your health. By tomorrow, if phone calls, you will wake up with phone calls and say, what is happening to me? What is changing in my life? Listen, please hear me believers, let me tell you the truth. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I've been mandated to insist that your life produces results. Yeah. Hallelujah. Undeniable, unquestionable results. Some of you, by reason of what is on your life, you are supposed to be building houses for people, not even looking for rent. Honestly, because in terms of value, you have worked on yourself. Let me pray for someone again. What is sitting on your destiny that will not let you and your family rise by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Here at Koinonia, all oh, be lifted from your life. Be lifted from your life. Be lifted from your life. That demonic embargo. The cause of the firstborn, the cause of the lastborn, the cause of siblings, the cause of idolatry, the cause of necromancy, the cause of fathers sacrificing children to be able to get money. It may not be my fault, but the Bible tells me I have an advocate with the Father, even Jesus the righteous. I decree and declare already for someone that embargo on your life that programming, it must give way this night. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You believe in what I'm telling you? What is there about the mighty hand of God that you cannot see? But let me tell you, if the foundations be destroyed, when the foundation is destroyed, God wants to step in, but there is a limitation because the covenant does not allow him to operate based on that. What the Holy Spirit can do is to grant you access to light, to know what you need to do that takes away the barrier. Are we together now? Yes between you and God and your breakthrough and testimony there are barriers principally foundations there are foundations that keep speaking woes of ill health there are foundations that speaks woes of failure the only way you eat is by being a servant you never can rise to a position of influence whether as a man of God as a businessman it does not care whether you are in America whether you are wherever it does not matter do you know Nathaniel said about Jesus can anything good come out of Nazareth didn't you see what happened to Samson was Samson not a Nazarene you think Samson just lay down and told a lady to cut his hair you think he was that stupid when you have that kind of power, will you be that foolish? Don't downplay the power of foundations. It can keep quiet for 10 years. You will think you are fine. But by the 11th year, it will come and pull you down and cancel everything. The house that fell, that was built on sand, it didn't fall from day one. There was a time that both houses were nice. If they even told you to pay for the house, you may prefer the house on sand to the house on the rock. Wait until the storms come. Wait until the wind blows. That's why you can see someone who is a billionaire for 25 years. Then by the 26th year, the foundation says I've been quiet. And in one year, everything goes down. One year, shame comes. A ministry can blow some for many years. And then it's like an ignition from the realm of the spirit and poof, just like balloon, everything goes down. 
but I know whom I believe and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day against that day against that day now there are some of you you may not be poor listen we're about to pray you may not be poor but you never have helpers in your life everything you get comes directly from you that's a terrible way to live everything if a door must open you are the one who must open it if you must eat it must come from your hand you do not know the help of God hallelujah a man of God you are a ministry you pay all the bills by yourself you pay nobody sees you and say no I believe in what you are doing I'm standing with you it's a spirit it's a spirit it's a spirit I know someone who was walking and what he uses for his transport from where he was staying sincerely speaking at the end of it when we calculated it it was not more than 10,000 that was left that means you are working on but what you are earning subtract transportation and the rest and at the end of it what you are really earning is 10,000 there are spirits that fight and destroy breadwinners of families the moment it identifies that you are the one God is using to bless a family here comes that thing it will pull you down so you go to a region and only find old people where are the young people the spirits know that the, it will take care of Baba and Mama and it will fight you you can see a young person sitting down and there is absolutely nothing working in his life two prayer points and I'll begin to minister within the time I have left Tonight, God wants to shake away this thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was told a story of, I think it was the Billy Graham Institute, that because they wanted to preserve, they wanted to preserve the institute and some of the monuments, you know, just like Baba, Baba Deboye's, you know, former house and all of that, and that they had to bring engineers. They dug through the ground and they carried the building out from the foundation and relocated it to a, a, another region and put it down there that's right that's what is happening to somebody this night yeah. hear me you don't renovate foundations uh -uh. if it is not working there is that spiritual bulldozer that can dig to the ground and carry you is it not in your bible that God can pick a man from a dunghill is a location and place him somewhere else. So what if I came from my region? Must I carry the cost that comes with that region? So what if my forefathers served idols? Did the realm of the spirit not hear when I made my declarations of faith? Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted, ancient doors. Listen. I prayed this for myself. I prayed this for this ministry. And I said in my lifetime, I will see the glory of the Lord. And no power of darkness is going to cut short the manifestation of that glory. It does not matter what the devil wants listen victory can be seen you can know that the hand of god is upon your life hallelujah two prayer points and when it's time to pray please let me plead with you in jesus name if you can for the sake of this prayer pair yourselves into three like we did the last time just these three prayer points and fire will fall in find anybody if you don't have a partner that's all right but we are going to pray if your neighbor is not serious please leave him alone we are serious this, this is this is a destiny altering moment say after me in the name of jesus i decree and declare by the blood 
of the eternal covenant right now I declare every negative foundation every altar speaking against me by the blood of Jesus be destroyed now go ahead and pray Pray, pray. Samanda skata balakata. Ke breke te ke te ke te ke te ke te. Ke proskoto peketa. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Fighting my influence. Be destroyed. Fighting access. Be destroyed. Fighting advancement. Be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, help those under the anointing. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 9. My God, fire is burning in this place. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And he said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Read verse 10. And I give unto you an anointing that will set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, the anointing for this dimension of exploits I receive it now go ahead and pray the grace dominion over kingdoms over nations to pull down to destroy pray In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in and just help those under the anointing. I'm about to minister deliverance now in the name of Jesus. Can I add one more prayer for you? Please don't be tired though. God is doing something in your life here. Say in the name of Jesus. The spirits of inheritance. The spirits of ancestry. By the blood of Jesus. Every legal access. You have. Over my life. My family. I declare. By the blood. Let it be broken now. Go ahead and pray. Broken now. Broken now. Broken now. 
broken now by the power of the Holy Ghost broken now broken now let it be broken let it be broken let it be broken In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, do you know what I'm seeing? The Lord is showing me a vision, and this is like the vision of a bride. You know how you say you may now, that thing you, you may now lose, uh, unveil the bride. That's what I'm seeing. That is a grace for visibility. We are going to pray. Are we together now? You know, when you watch a wedding ceremony, you now say you may now unveil the bride. That means it's time for manifestation. God is speaking to someone. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare my head, my hands, my destiny be lifted up. Find visibility. Go ahead and begin to pray. Be lifted up. Be lifted up. My head. No more downcast. Be lifted up. My influence. Find visibility. Man of God, pray. Pray. Businessman, pray. My head. A symbol of my glory. My hands. A symbol of my productivity. My destiny be lifted up. We shall like at a prakatesh, Kesha prakatapatosh, Kapras katapakatosh, Kola kras katapesh, Grande barakatos sotopros, Ekra katapalakata praskatipata. Hallelujah. 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 Now you have prayed. It's my turn to pray for you now. It will be a very quick walk, but I want your heart to be open. Please, when it's time to bring the people out, whether you are an usher or not, just help them very quickly because we need to do this very fast. Fire is burning in this place. I want to pray. I want you to believe this. The first thing I'm hearing is to deliver those appointed unto death. There are families here you may be walking, but Satan is already programming something. I'm about to pray. The fire of God is going to fall on those individuals representing their families. Very quickly, I want you to bring them out here. Father, in the name of Jesus, any family here, having an altar or a foundation that wants to tie down their life, tie down their relevance, tie down their longevity by the power that raised Christ from the dead. As you count Jesus at the shout of three, in the name of Jesus, it must give way. Are you ready, my God? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Release them now. Release them now. Release them now. Release them now. Bring them out. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You 
number two there are families under an unusual yoke of hardship that yoke is about to be broken hear me hardship no matter what you do it is father suffering mother suffering I'm about to pray fire is falling now everyone under the sound everyone under the sound of my voice under this yoke at the count of three wherever you are inside and outside following from any nation of the world let that anointing rest and bring deliverance for you are you ready to shout jesus one two three shout jesus that yoke be broken be broken be broken be broken be broken be broken I'm seeing the number 11 fire is coming on their hands and the Lord is telling me the spirit that has tied down your productivity is about to give way 11 people bring them out right now I decree and declare I don't know where you are 11 of you let that fire come upon your hand right now Bring them out. Let it come upon your hand right now. Now I want to pray a very serious prayer. Please bring them out quickly. I want to pray a very serious prayer. Everyone's destiny here that has been exchanged. If you don't believe this, you are joking. You are joking if you don't believe this that destinies can be exchanged that you find yourself living another man's life you know that this is not my life no everything that has exchanged your destiny by the power that raised Christ from the dead my God I'm seeing the anointing coming on people already there is a rearrangement that is happening in the realm of the spirit rearrangement of families the Bible says that the least shall be the greatest right now every destiny that has been exchanged be restored now 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 hallelujah Listen, I hope you know that infirmity is a spirit. Infirmity is beyond a medical condition. I'm going to pray right now. There are people who are sick. Drugs can solve their problems based on the law of times and seasons. But there are people who have come under the influence of the spirit of infirmity. When the spirit of infirmity is upon you, headache can keep you down. And nothing else will be able to help you except the power of God there are families like that every month you must fall sick every time you must fall sick Malika ashapa karozia tabanda sofra haskia krede beketo shala grete feskine madhaj before I minister to the sick I must minister deliverance to those who have been bound by that spirit Who is Rachel? Rachel. I'm hearing a name, Rachel. Rachel. Shabbat Sobraka Subrende Keliata. Rachel. Rachel.
I don't know if I'm seeing, in my vision, I'm seeing someone, maybe you are outside or any of the overflows. I'm seeing that you came with a, I'm seeing a crutch. I just saw a crutch lifted up. That's what I saw in the spirit. Wherever that person is, lift it up and begin to walk. Whether you are, make sure you don't, please. Who brought that? Are you the one? You could not walk. Walk. No, if he, if he can't, listen, don't force him. If he tries to move and it's not, just keep praying for him there. But you check yourself, test yourself. The moment you can, make your way to the front. Don't, don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Rachel. Kai. I'm seeing one of you tied and all I'm seeing is snakes from head to toe. Right now, I'm praying. Every altar, I don't, I don't care where it is coming from. Right now, at the count of three, may that fire rest upon you and set you free right now. One, two, three, be free from this demonic thing. Right now, be free from it now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be free from it now. Be free from it now. Hallelujah. Now, I may not ask you to come out so that you are not embarrassed, but I'm going to pray for you. I don't know if we'll have the time to take testimonies, but if we, we don't, no problem the next time. But this is somebody, you have HIV. Listen carefully. Your HIV was not just sleeping around and all of that. I've seen this happen many times, so I can tell you, it's not everybody that has HIV that got it from wrong living. There are wicked spirits. This one, you just had a dream, and it's like you started imaginating something started happening to you. I don't know who that person is, but right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord God of heaven is bringing you life now. Life to your body. Who is Antony? Antony. Antony. Is that your name, sir? Antony. God is about to turn your life around, my friend. Antony. Who is from Kogi State? Kogi State. Yeah. You are not the only one now. Just indicate and from Kogi State. I'm not saying you are from. There are many people there. I mean, among the Antonis, who is from Kogi State. I will pray for the rest a very strong fire the power of God is coming on one of you right now before I even just speak prophetically I just saw that light come on one of you and the Lord is saying it has come to an end you know that song that 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 that, that, that was our, our song that that Tokwe Sad sang that it is over it is by the Spirit right now that power of the Most High is coming on that one person and it is his liberty that God is bringing you receive it right now by the power of the Holy Ghost let an end come to this demonic oppression you are from Kogi State my friend you are coming from there no, I, mean, Abuja, yeah. I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ everything that has tied you down and tied your family there is a lady that the Lord is bringing a supernatural miracle to your family. You are from Ondo State. Ondo State. This is what you are from Ondo State. God is bringing between now and the end of November. This is what the Lord is ministering to me. Ondo State. Between now and the end of November. What God will do in your life will surprise you. The person I am seeing, the angel of the Lord is telling me to look left that the person is on this balcony the person that i'm talking about from on those state you are wearing like red something like red i don't know whether the person is be careful be careful don't fight my friend don't fight them that's wrong you are in the house of god you want to receive from god and you are fighting these are some of the things that block block miracles how do you fight and you, who is the person I'm talking about? Huh? 
Am I wasting your time? Where is, I'm seeing some people who came from Zamfara for this miracle service. You came from Zamfara. There is one of them that I want to speak. You are a lady. You are a fair lady. You came from Zamfara. I don't, oh dear. We have to hurry up and, is there someone like that? Please verify. Because I know some people, no matter what we say, you will still come out. Be obedient. This is the house of God. Let's abide by instructions so that we can make progress. You don't have to come out. Once it's, if the word is not for you, just be patient and wait in faith. Where is the lady from Ondo State? All of you, that's all right. I'm going to pray for you. I stretch my hands right now. I just saw light leaving my hand and coming on one of you. And the Lord is saying, that song, Yakari, the Lord is saying is coming to an end. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, I declare over right now. Over right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Over right now. Help them please. Let it be over by the spirit of grace. By the spirit of grace. By the spirit of grace. My friend, this man wearing green or is it lime? What do you do? Huh? I'm a government consultant. You are a... I consult for government. I want to pray for you. Because I'm seeing you climb a ladder in the realm of the spirit. And every time I see someone climbing a ladder, that is a level of lifting that God is bringing. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. I, I hope you believe this. In Jesus' name, may it happen for you as God has declared. Is there a Yoruba name like Mone? Is it Mor Mone? Morenike? 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 Who is that? I just heard the name Morenike. Because God is about to bring a very strange visitation to that family. Morenike, this is what I'm hearing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Obina from Imo State. Obina from Imo State. If there is a gentleman like that, Obina, you are from Imo State. Is there someone like that? Come. Your time has come. Please, let's, let me have your attention so that we'll finish. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare. Gentlemen, all of you who have come out here by the power that raised Christ from the dead, every embargo sitting on your destiny, it must give way right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. May God bless you. Return to your seat. Where is the gentleman? I need to pray for you very quickly. You are from Imo State. What's your name? Obina. Obina. Where's your family? I want to pray for you. Truly, let me tell you, this God you see, Ba, he can lift men. Except he has not come to you. He will lift you in a way that surprises you. Father, I pray for this gentleman and I decree and declare. You called him out by prophecy. May the Lord sort your life supernaturally. And that of your family. In the name of Jesus. Everything that represents reproach in this family, I command that it gives way right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady and a guy, two of them will shout under the anointing now. Please bring them out. A lady and a guy. The gentleman will even be surprised. Because usually, you know, gentlemen are macho, none of my business with embarrassment. But the power of God... <laughs> a gentleman and and a lady most of you really do not know the power of God's word that is the same way when God speaks those said everything obeys that when God shows up everything adjusts it's true it's not a song if it is the God of the Bible, 
if he looks at you and commands the gates of your destiny to be opened it is open like he's saying through me now the gates of your destiny efata. in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ um, it is your name it's not like it's a position a legal position your name is justice 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 I just had that name if the person is here very quickly because we want to pray for the sick right now there are many people carrying all kinds of demonic sicknesses and those sicknesses must leave in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ when you find a gentleman called justice do you know what I just saw in my vision I just saw fire burning and I saw the names of people in a particular family written on it like it is burning but it's not burning the names but the names are inside that fire I don't know who this is but let me speak over someone anyone who has programmed witchcraft against you and your loved ones God just opened my eyes I saw names like in a paper but it was not burning and yet fire is burning on it by the power of the Holy Ghost I'm saying it again whoever programmed witchcraft against you this night he returns back to that devil he returns back to that devil hallelujah the morning the morning that Dunsin had an accident and we thank God for preserving such a precious gift to the body of Christ you know that morning we were together with him talking about the revivals and the moves of God, fathers of faith and the mighty things. And we're going to have a morning session, you know, powerful time of worship. And I thought we hugged and greeted one another and he was on his way. Heading for the morning session in another meeting, they just reached me and said, this is what has happened. Let me tell you the truth. We are in the days where you must know what is the basis of your stand. Are we together now? Everything you can put together as an advantage, spiritual intelligence, prophetic covering, everything must be put together to sustain you at these evil times. When I saw the car and to know that it came out like this, it is a miracle and a testimony. Hallelujah. He was headed to Ibadan to go and minister for Baba Wale Oke. You see, I was going to go for that. I think I was it before or after. I don't know which of them. And then this happened. The devil is restless because he knows that the times are close. And let me tell you, he's not looking for everybody. The fact that he's on the case of your family, he should tell you he has seen something there. Because the Bible says the thief cometh not but for to steal. There are many of you, there was peace in your life, peace in your marriage, peace in everything. But suddenly, the devil is coming now. Do you know what? Don't think he's looking for your wife or your husband. That's none of his business. He's looking for that in you that can support God's end time program. That's it. There are some of you, your business was doing well. When you started giving for the Lord's work the devil said no I don't have a problem with you prospering provided the kingdom does not benefit from it but now I see that with your money you gave someone scholarship you helped somebody uh -uh, this one we are going to have to and he will try to attack you not every attack is a result of prayerlessness or unseriousness there are things that are indications that you have become a source of frustration to the devil that means how you know that somebody does not know what to do with you again. Hallelujah. The Lord is opening my eyes. I will pray this last one, then I'll pray for the sick. I'm looking and I'm seeing a, like a graveyard, you know, a cemetery, I meant to say. 
That's what the Lord is opening my eyes to see. And then I'm seeing somebody wake up from a dream. This is, is like, this is what the spirit of death, you keep sleeping and you see people who have long gone. We are not talking of the spirits of just men made perfect. We are talking of similitude of demon spirits using even faces of people that you used to know. The living and the dead have nothing in common. At the resurrection will be joined together for those who are in Christ. That's what the Bible says. But for now, a gulf has been created that separates us. So every spirit of the grave that has been calling anyone in the name of Jesus using dreams, using prophetic experiences, for some of you, the devil is planning that you will not see December 31st. That it is this year everything will end up with you. In the name of Jesus, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, we decree and declare death has no power over you. Death has no power over you. Hallelujah. Now lay your hands. I want to pray for the sick. Many people came here because you have heard that Jesus heals. Sadly, we have to work with time. I'm not sure we may even have the time to take testimonies because we still have to pray over our requests. But I want you to lay your hands. It is true that Jesus heals. No distraction, please. Lay your hands there. If it's a part of your body you can touch, make contact with it. Some of you are standing in for your children, your loved ones. Don't let the devil destroy them. Lay your hands. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. For I'm seeing people holding photos of people, holding phones. I'm sure others are connecting from across the globe. There are many, many people who connect from hospitals with their loved ones, some in ICU, some at emergency rooms. Now is the time to pray. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength. You sent your word and it healed my disease. You are the Lord, Lord my, my healer. I want to pray. I am a product of the healing power of Jesus myself. I know that he heals. If you ever doubt that Jesus performs miracles, look at a living miracle standing before you. I know he heals. I'm about to pray now. This is one of the graces and the privileges God has given us as a ministry to bring as a gift to the body of Christ and across the nations of the earth. Those outside, all the overflows, now is your time to receive. He's a healing Jesus. As I pray for you, I want you to shout a loud amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is telling me about someone. You quietly met a doctor and the doctor told you that something is growing in your body. You have not shared this with anybody but that you need to pray. You are a man. He told you you are beginning to have symptoms of prostrate because you went because of some abnormalities you, are, you began to see in your body and you went to meet the doctor and just on telling him, he could almost say, but he did some preliminary test, a test and he came to the conclusion that you are beginning to have the symptoms of an enlarged prostrate. You have not shared this with people. I want you to believe Jesus is about to heal. Every spirit 
that is back of any infirmity here represented in this auditorium over the life of your precious loved ones over the life of our global family and as many who are connecting right now across the body of Christ in the name of Jesus in this atmosphere of intense worship and faith I'm declaring to you by the power that raised Christ from the dead that the spirit that is back of this we command judgment on that spirit now and I decree and declare my God I'm seeing fire enter the chest of people like literally entering inside I decree and declare be healed now be healed now outside I decree and declare lift your hands the overflow outside by the power that raised Christ from the dead we see you from here be healed now All other overflows in the name of Jesus, the Lord is with you right there. But I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, migraine headaches be healed. Yeah. HIV be healed. Yeah. Prostrate be healed. Yeah. There is a lady, you have a disease. This is something that is common with women and it has become an embarrassment to you many many times in the name of jesus the lord is healing you right now the lord is touching someone's right ear be healed right now i'm seeing someone you can walk but you are already beginning to have severe joint pains almost everywhere you know like it happens to a sickler in the name of Jesus, be healed now. Every dead or dying kidney jacks back to life now. For someone having a failed liver, God gives you brand new liver now. I command eyes that are blind partially or totally to be opened now. Bone conditions be healed now. The Lord is showing me a vision that is quite embarrassing. I'm seeing someone, you're going to ease yourself in the toilet and what is coming out is not just stool that you are passing this is something related to pile it's almost like you know it, there are projections from within you coming out that you have to push back i'm sorry for sounding graphic but this is what the lord is showing me i don't know who that person is but in the name of jesus i declare that pile it dies now I'm sorry to say it and don't feel embarrassed but I'm seeing at least it is not less than 17 ladies here having multiple lumps multiple lumps I don't know what is this thing that the devil is doing in this end time with women that is just plaguing them with lumps and growths our dear sisters we are praying for you in the name of Jesus any spirit that wants to spy upon your liberty because of your wombs that must carry the prophets, the apostles, and those who will herald the move of God even in their young age. We declare those demonic growths live now. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm praying for someone I don't know what it is I'm seeing around your neck here very stiffness and severe swelling the power of God is coming upon you right now in the name of Jesus now please don't be embarrassed but how many people here came here trusting God for the fruit of the womb the fruit of the womb 
the fruit of the womb now I, I know that there might be several people but I don't know how we are going to do this the Lord has given me an instruction to I don't lay hands carelessly no I don't you don't see me lay hands on people carelessly but if and when God grants the grace to do I understand the power and the value of laying on of hands as a doctrine I don't know please only those no standing for anyone you are and then you must be married two things make sure you you can believe what you want to believe but within what we are doing please there's nothing to be embarrassed about are we together so you meet these two conditions you are standing for yourself i want you to come while that is happening quickly please sit down for a minute and i want you to write start writing your prayer request right now please come and stand quickly i want to pray for you just one minute i'm going to touch you and that will be the end of it Are you standing for yourself? The devil is a liar. We are praying for them because these are the people bringing the next generation of Koinonia. The devil is a liar. For in the sanctuary, God. a stillness in the atmosphere ah. oh come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary I don't know how we're going to do this now because make sure you are writing your prayer request the Lord gave me a special instruction on those prayer requests tonight. And if you need to call your loved ones and have it down, those following online, here is your chance to do that quickly. Please, no standing in for someone. My dear, look at me. This lady, wait, lifting her hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! Jesus! The name of Jesus Christ. Now, please hear me. There are so many people and I have to obey what God has said, but my God, can you imagine how many people? You see what the devil is doing to families? You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. Truly you will be changed His glory will be revealed When the Spirit takes over your soul We'll leave it from here As many, those who, those who are at the door there will just stop there All others can just stand by faith I don't know how we're going to do it I'm, I'm first going to pray Barrenness is a spirit You will soon see it happen Barrenness is not just a case of not taking in. Now I want to pray. Believers, some of you are ministers. Let me teach you how to minister fruitfulness. It's not just about laying hands and saying, no, there is a spirit that is largely behind it. Those of you in front, lift your hands. Let me first cast out that spirit. And then you will be surprised. I'm going to pray and then we'll make it quickly. While that is happening, Please, ushers, you can be passing the prayer request as soon as I pray the prayer request so that we'll, we'll, we'll put it now. Father, in the name of Jesus, every legal access, I speak to these spirits, this is the house of God. Right now at the count of three, the spirits that are responsible for barrenness, right now, I don't care what gave you legal access. At the count of three, it is time for God's people to be fruitful. One, Two, three, go, 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 go now, go now, go now, go now, go now, barrenness, go now, 
manifesting as impotency, manifesting as the inability to, to be with child. Go now. Every legal access the devil has over you, your family, and every covenant that authorizes Satan by the blood of the eternal covenant, be free now. Amen. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Here's what will happen. Just, just stay where you are. While we are collecting the prayer request, I am going to be very, very fast. Just a touch. You don't need to tell me anything. Just a touch and you go back to your seat rejoicing. Let there be no chaos. I have to obey what God has told me. It will be very, very fast. I don't lay hands carelessly, but we'll do this by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. 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 By the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. The next set, please. Very quickly. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, as I lay hands on you, just be on your way so you clear the way for others. In the name of Jesus, return back with your miracle by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Don't worry, as they reduce, we'll get more space. Just be patient. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare that it is done, even by the Spirit, please. In the name of Jesus, please. Once I pray for them, let the next set come, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. He touched me. Jesus touched me. And oh, what joy fills my heart. Something happened now. I know, I know. He, he touched, touched me, me and me.
request very quickly hallelujah let's have the prayer request please very quickly bring it bring it let's hallelujah why do we take the time to pray over this request because you see this right here you see is the most accurate representation of everyone's desire no matter how we take the time to minister, we are limited in very many ways. Don't get used to submitting your prayer request here. You are not submitting it to a man. You are tabling your request before the Lord. According to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, it says to be anxious for nothing, but in everything it says, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. It says, let your request be made known unto God. Hallelujah very quickly while you are seated you've been standing i want you to stretch your hands towards this request go ahead you don't have to stand stretch your hands towards this request and for those who are yet to submit this yes, just bring it quickly as we pray i believe in the power of the holy spirit i'll give you a few seconds you will be surprised. We have a covenant of answered prayers with the God of heaven. You have seen it for yourself what God is able to do. Quickly, please. 
When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Go ahead and begin to declare by faith. Father, this is October. By November, I'm receiving every answer. Remember, the scripture that we read. When the glory comes, we no words to say. Quickly. All right. Give us Joshua 21 45. This is what is happening to you tonight. Joshua 21 45. Please. Dear fail not ought any of this thing. Give us amplified. Let's see if we can have amplified very quickly so we pray. I truly believe in the covenant of answered prayer. Dear fail no part of any good thing which the Lord had promised to the house of Israel. All came to pass all apostle including the job all including the termination of wicked contracts over your family all someone shout all, all. let the devil hear it all, all. for when his glory comes there be no words to say Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands. We are still praying. Don't be tired. Your life is about to change. Those outside, make sure you are stretching your hands. Our global family, stretch your hands by faith. Yes, we are change. Yes, we are Cheya Kare. Megirma ya Cheya Kare. Serki ya Cheya Kare. Ya Kare. Ya Kare. Ya Kare. Yes, we are Cheya Kare. I'm already praying over this. Yes, we are The long standing issue. Yes, we are The shame and the reproach. Yes, we are It is finished, Jesus said. It is over. What is over? Everything that does not reflect the life and the character of Christ. What is over? Shame. What is over? Delay. What is over? Reproach. What is over? Weeping. What is over? Poverty and lack. What is over? People asking you, where is your God? What is over? The absence of the glory of God in your life. What is over? Terminal diseases. Therefore, I'd like you to begin to sing that song over this prayer request. Declare it as a proclamation. 
father it is over reproach is someone declaring I lay these anointed hands upon this request and by the spirit of grace we prophesy it is over 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 by the power of God's grace That I sang this song first on stage here someone sent me a text by the next day he said he took that song he does not even really know how to speak outside it's not even a Nigerian and he said it just came with such an anointing he sang and danced with it for over three hours by the next day by the next day a contract of what maybe in Nigerian Naira will be the equivalent of one billion the very next day something he had been pursuing almost forever yes we are changing kare yes we are changing kare yes we are changing kare your spirit is calling the things that must come to an end shame and reproach father fighting mother mother fighting father antagonizing you in your place of work ministry being limited and would not grow sing it from Kenya to America to Europe it's a prophetic word I decree and declare over this request for someone I stand by the God of heaven if your eyes can see the Sun rise tomorrow you will also hear of the answers of this request I say it again if your eyes can see the rising of the Sun except I be not called of God but may your ears also hear the answers of this listen when prophet Elisha said by this time tomorrow the one who the king leaned on said ah even if God will open the windows of heaven might this happen people speak from the standpoint of the authority given to them by God I told you prophecy does not only reveal prophecy creates let me say it again for someone it will not reach 24 hours my God will surprise you For someone finally the answer comes tomorrow yes we are changing kare we are wrapping up yes we are changing every dying ministry yes we are changing kare every life that has been bent in shame
there is a man of God you are watching you are sitting on your chair you are watching from Nairobi you are about to quit ministry because you have done everything you know to be to do there are bills in the name of Jesus Christ I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of the Living God this song even though you may not be of the Nigerian tongue but the revelation is clear it is over and it is finished yeah. apostle I have four children where will their school fees come from the song carries the answer I told you this is a song of deliverance it's a song that you war with when you have understanding hallelujah now let me declare over you Tokwe Sachs came here and he led us through a powerful moment of worship minister Dunsin came here and so powerfully pushed us into another realm of worship these things have prophetic implications in the atmosphere of worship the spirit of prophecy is strong I want to speak over your life please I want you to believe in the power of prophetic speakings because we are made by the excellency of the speakings I taught you last week everybody in Christ and through spiritual understanding is a prophetic rainmaker I taught you last week rainmakers use divination to manipulate the clouds so that a cloud that is barren and should not have rain they begin to coordinate clouds from regions and gather them in one place and make it come they call them rainmakers and the believer in Christ you can use the creative power of God's prophetic speakings to draw forth he said I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound don't ask where the sound came from he said speak to the breath the winds all winds from the four regions of the earth blow and come upon this lane there are many of us who are alive but it's like we're dead because everything that makes for living and dignity is dead in your life we're about to prophesy resurrection just a few minutes but you must receive with all your heart koinonia i pray for you as touching the grace that god has given in this prophetic season 10 is a number of a circle coming to an end i decree and prophesy to you by the god of heaven and in the name that is above every other name the rain that has been long overdue let it begin to fall time back someone reached me and I saw his text I'm so so person then I picked how are you sir and he just said apostle I didn't call you for prayer or anything for three days God had been speaking to me and God told me that from today he wants me to stand and sow this amount of seed to this ministry for as long as my business thrives I said what is this are you sure you want to did you discuss this with your wife said ah, I'm not a child I'm not a this this is what God has put in my heart and when that happened it was not really what he said that was the testimony I began to pray and I said Lord there is a covenant in this house that whatever flows from the head must go down to every part listen when you go to take your bath your leg does not struggle to touch the shower it is patient because it knows by connection you bath your whole body by standing on one position. I said all that to prophesy to you 
strangers will call you strangers will reach you strangers will look for you they will tell you they were mandated by God to insist till you rise hallelujah I traveled to a particular nation and I finished preaching went to bed to sleep by the next day I got up and then my host calls me and says apostle you are strange I said what is wrong he said come let me show you something we go out and we get to a place and there is a very very expensive car that was parked and he said a man of God drove with this car and said right here he said give it to apostle I said number one um, how do I carry this car to Nigeria number two um, the way they drive their direction of driving is not the same with our own so what well it's none of my business this is what the man has said I said call the man and we tried to speak to him you thought he would be sympathetic and say okay I'll come and take it and no leave it there it's yours what is on you is what controls what is around you I'm saying this because there are many things in our lives that have refused to change I want to prophesy something to come upon your head he said my horn has thou exalted like the head of a, the horn of a unicorn and I have been anointed with fresh oil please hear me koinonia in the name of Jesus I declare over you the mantle that makes for favor and for lifting let it rest on you now Hallelujah. When Minister Dunsin came up, he prayed very powerfully for the grace for intimacy. I want to pray that grace for you. You are lacking seriously spiritually if you have not obtained the grace. He said, blessed is the man that God caused to approach. You are called like the king had to send for people. You don't just come. It's a summon by his grace. But when he calls you to that inner chamber, you will find treasures within the chamber that gives you authority. Even if you are a gatekeeper like Mordecai, the moment you enter the inner chamber of the king, from there you are climbing the king's horse to a life of dignity and honor. Let me speak to someone. In the name of Jesus, may your intimacy with the Holy Spirit, the value that comes from his presence, from his word, from the place of prayer, let it translate to an exceptional life of signs and wonders. Don't be tired, I'm praying. Let me pray over your finances. Please don't say it does not matter. The devil is tying down people and making the matters of finance to interrupt people and not allow people to serve God with integrity and to serve God acceptably. You belong to a family that has been marvelously helped of God. That name Ebenezer is a reality by the message of God. I speak to you in the name of Jesus. By the power that brought the raven to feed Elijah at Brook Cherith, so that he was not without supplies, may supernatural supplies begin to attend to your needs. In the name of Jesus I decree and I declare whoever has been mandated by God to hold your hands in this season and introduce you to the next season of your life I compel them by the Spirit to perform their ministry in the name of Jesus Christ I told you that a generation only hears you because the mantle of honor is upon you not just because you are valuable you can be valuable and yet not be heard he says thou shall take Joshua in whom is the spirit and he says thou shall lay your hands upon him hallelujah and then he says you shall take some of your honor and you shall put upon him so that the congregation would hear him it takes honor you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is conferred upon you by another but when that grace is upon you 
you will speak and nations will hearken to you i decree and declare that mantle and that grace for honor may it rest visibly upon your life from tonight i stand by the privilege of god's grace alongside the coordinated grace of all the fathers in this nation that god has granted privilege to receive from nothing dies in your hands nothing dies in your hands from today begin to record on ending testimonies testimonies in the morning testimonies in the afternoon testimonies in the night in the name of jesus christ everything you have started but has not finished receive the finisher's anointing For those of you praying for divine direction, to know what God wants you to do for the next season of your life, in a dream of the night, may my God come with accurate answers for you. <laughs> Hear me. If there is any Jonah sitting in your boat, making you to lose things, and you are about to lose your life, I throw that Jonah out of the boat. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody who is already in the belly of the fish, it looks like it has been concluded about you. The same voice that spoke to the fish and informed Jonah out, whatever it has swallowed in your life, we command it must vomit it now. Finally, every point of contact you came here with, your hands as a symbol of your productivity, your documents, whatever it is, I decree and declare, in the name of Jesus Christ, may the grace for favor rest upon them. Now, please hear me. We pray for Abuja. Lord, behold their threatenings, he said, and grant that that signs and wonders be done in the name of your holy son we have a responsibility over this city and over this territory and this nation to responsibly make our spiritual contributions in making for the safety in the name of jesus we release the forces of judgment we command the wind we command the earth in the name of jesus the bible says and the stars fought for deborah we declare by the power of prophecy let the tokens of judgment be released over this city and every conspiracy of darkness that is fighting the purposes of god let it fail permanently now please hear me don't say it does not matter us and uk are not foolish people they will not throw away their reputation just for nothing saying ab about the threat and the rest but can i tell you before god will come to sodom and gomorrah he came to abraham and abraham said if you find 10 people will you still judge them and god said no i don't know about you but i'm here you can count the rest in the name of jesus christ we stand here as prophetic signposts together with all who name the name of christ and we declare the spirit that sponsors evil we command you are banished from our region <laughs> hallelujah and anyone who has vowed that for as long as he's alive people must die i stand by the mantle of judgment may the earth open and swallow them anybody who is profiting from this wickedness in the name of Jesus I say it again that which they eat will be to their death yeah. therefore we release angels the entire six local governments that make up the FCT we release angels 
and we pray for the neighboring regions Nasarawa State, Benue State, Plateau State, Kaduna State, Niger State. You are fortified. We pray for the law enforcement agents who labor day and night. May God grant them courage and intelligence. But as for you, I declare, may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and by all means. Please hear me. We pray for everyone connected to this vision. The children, the spouses, the businesses in the name that is above all names. And by the mystery of the fourth man in the fire that says those who the fire had no power over, there shall be no loss. Please hear me. I want you to walk up around with vigilance, but walk with confidence. Fight fear. Did you hear what I said? Fight fear. Fight fear. I'm not stupid. The first crisis that happened officially in Plateau State, I was in the middle of it. I was somewhere in town. I sp how many years did we spend in Zaria? You know how many crises and troubles I've seen? The person speaking to you is not stupid. And he said, they that are with us are greater. Please, I want you, this fear that is palpable upon people. Now, of course, I know that, you know, wickedness and rage is there, but I am telling you this, do not fear. You fear you will not go about your activities and you will be poor, you will be broke. It's the spirit, it's not just a spirit of terrorism. It's a spirit that bankrupts people and takes away your productivity. Do your due diligence, work with wisdom, but I assure you, do not fear. Everybody who tries evil in this nation will know that there is a real throne that sits. And there is him that sits, jealously protecting the name of the Lord. For who shall say a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Listen, we are loyal citizens, but we are not fools. There are people who God has granted grace and access. We owe a responsibility to speak prophetically over the peace of the land. It will never be that you went out and then you could not return back to your home because you were in the middle of a crisis. If it will happen, you will not go there. But if you go there, then it will not happen. Wave your hands to Jesus and give him praise. Wave your hands as a wave offering to Jesus who is the son of the living God. We give thanks. We give thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. All we have declared and all you have received tonight, it is permanent in your life in Jesus' name. Let me make the altar call before we end tonight's service. There is someone here who is saying, Apostle, thank you for all of the mighty things that Jesus has done through you to his people but my issue right now is that i need jesus and i need him desperately and there's someone who is saying apostle i've i remember giving my heart to jesus but sincerely as it is now things are not yet right in my life i do not want to leave this service without that encounter please wherever you are i know that our time is gone but let me one minute of your time i want you to leave your seat right now and come Come and stand here. Don't be ashamed. Don't look around. Be bold and come and stand. There has to be someone. If you are coming, God bless you. God bless you. For someone you are saying, well, I remember giving my heart to Jesus, but as it is, things are not all right. Can I come to rededicate my life? Join them. God bless you. Are you celebrating them, Koinonia? Come. Come. Let him give you a new beginning. It is true that no Jesus, no life. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. You can make it right with him right now. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand, all of you who are here, and I'm going to lead you to pray this prayer. 
if there are those who are still coming or in all the overflows you can just stay right where you are and pray the prayer very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ as I pray with you I want your heart to be open Jesus is here to receive you and give you a new beginning lift your right hand and say after me Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I have seen your power I believe in you that you are the Son of God right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord as my Savior and as my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I declare from tonight and forever that I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name father thank you for these ones they have come declaring their faith and the Bible says as many who will come to him you will in no wise cast away I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that based on the authority of Scripture and by your declaration I declare your sins forgiven the Lord gives you a new beginning from tonight you go from glory to glory and grace to grace may the marvelous hand of God rest upon you you are blessed you remain blessed in Jesus much less name amen and amen God bless you please may I request that you follow the counselors just move to my right which is your left there are counselors there they would honor you and have a word with you very quickly and you'll be back to your seat just appreciate them as they go hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.